What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny's Mission Impossible in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every single movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Andy Cortez. That's Kevin Coelho. That over there. It's Mr. 48K himself. Nice Mr. shirt, Kino. Tim. Thank you. Where can I get this shirt? I think you can go to kindoffunny.com slash store to get that uh, bad boy. I really the could. The second Kind of Funny Bridge shirt. This is a collector's item, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are no longer selling the black shirt. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Is that true? <laughs> I just threw that out there. No. You're not going to be able to get that. I don't believe we are. <laughs> but we are <laughs> selling this. Beautiful the Heather, Heather Gray, Gray bridge shirt. Mm -hmm. Vintage style. Nice patina baked into it already. That'll tell you anything right now. Nice this shirt's going to cook in real, real nice. nice. Real, real nice. Real nice. As featured on uh, Nick Scarpino in tomorrow's KFAF, I hear. I believe so, yeah. I wore it today because Joey is smart and told all of us to wear the shirt knowing that only one of us would remember mm -hmm. but two of us remember it today two of us did uh, i brought mine and i looked at you you were on gamescast and i was like or, or uh, games daily and i was like cool we're twinsies one of us we're not going to bookend mm -hmm. these stunads over here with, with two shirts so stunads. i'm going to wear mine tomorrow so yeah. that's what's going to happen tomorrow great that's show good. plan for KF you can join us tomorrow, you two can, can can be just like me and nick kind of funny.com slash store uh this show happens every tuesday 11 a.m twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you can watch live or you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny or on roosterteeth.com thank you all for watching along at roosterteeth.com i've been looking at all the comments there you guys are fantastic to us thank you for that uh, you can also listen on podcast services just search for kind of funny reviews um and for the next six weeks uh you'll also get in that feed the game of thrones interview that we're doing for the final season of game of thrones That's good so, stuff Go check that out. That's happening every Monday. If you want to be part of the show, like Patreon producer David Mintel did, you can go to patreon.com slash kinda funny. <laughs> Um, and then Does you can also write tell in you to watch this show anymore? <laughs> I'm sure he does. We've I'm said sure. so much shit about it. At one point, we just went on a tirade on KFAF about how he saves ponies from other ponies. It was... Like, not we. It was just Nick. No, Andy was part of it, that too. That was part of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. But they were racist baby horses. Whoa. Yeah, they were... Yeah, it's true. Well, so he's, he's liberating the good ones. ones. The good ones. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And killing the bad like ones. Like Last Jedi. Yeah. Um, you guys Just can like be a part of the show. Jedi. Patreon, write in your haikus and reviews. We'll read those My later. Freak. I want to let you know today we are talking about Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. And now before we get into it, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. last week, last week before we got into you it, had some, you, I went you, on a little tirade. You are a non-believer in the Mission I Impossible series. I hit the point. Series. I was like, guys, look, we're four movies in, and I'm not saying they're bad. But I feel like there's no cohesion. I feel like there's too much filler in these movies. I feel like we're not like the, the, the highs are highs, but the mids are just kind of there. You know, I'm not liking it. I want to see the team. I want to see the people that I'm familiar with. No. I want more of that. And I didn't get it. I haven't yeah. been getting it. I was yeah. like, you know what? I don't know. I'm not excited to see the next Mission Impossible in theaters when it happens. And then what I, happened? And then I went home and I watched Rogue Nation. Rogue yeah, motherfucking did. nation. Yeah, did. Holy fucking shit. Hold on to your tits, everybody. Yeah, ladies, this gentlemen. is a goddamn movie. This and I good. will see every Mission Impossible day one in theaters till the day I die. Yeah. Tom yeah, Cruise right. is a fucking genius yeah. from beginning to end. This is a masterpiece of an action movie. So every good. single thing, every complaint that I had last week. Fixed. Yeah, they, Every they, single one. This is really the movie where they're like, oh, we figured it out. You guys, we need to have a little bit of it. Like, the team needs to come back. You need familiar characters. And let's, there's moments in this where you're like, oh, is this scene going to go on? Nope, we're done. Nope. That's we're the action scene. On. That's yeah. it. The action scenes cool. are incredible. It starts off incredible with just like super hype action scene. The team is amazing. There's actually quippy <clears throat> dialogue throughout the entire thing. Yeah. The, um, the female kind of love interest is not really a love interest. She's a fucking badass, badass and rivals Tom Cruise. And for the first time, you believe it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But the that's music's why the, amazing. The bad guy's really awesome. Yeah. Every single action set piece is fucking fantastic. Rogue Nation, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Released yeah. on July 31st, 2015. Directed by Christopher McQuarrie. McQuarrie. Yeah. So yeah, I think he, had, he was a writer prior to this. And the story, if I remember correctly, goes like, he was just hanging out with Tom Cruise one day, and Tom was like, hey, you sh would you want to direct the next one? And he's like, sure, like thinking it was not going to happen. And then he said, literally, Tom got up, went to the other room, made a call, came back, goes, cool, you're directing a Mission Impossible 5. That's yeah, so that's, cool. that's what it sounds like happened, and because he, he, they worked together on a whole bunch of other movies, including Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, that's right. Um, what a he, great movie. That one. Christopher McQuarrie directed oh, The so Way good. of the Gun, Jack Reacher. And Two we'll go on movies, to do yeah. Mission Impossible Fallout. Fallout, yeah. By the way, if you've never seen The Way of the Gun, it's actually mm -hmm. a really cool movie. It's a Ryan Phillippe, um, 
which we call Benicio del Toro movie. It's just about hmm. two gunslingers in modern day. It's like a modern day like gunslinging western, but set in Norman Hound now. It's fucking really, really cool, really stylized that movie. Sounds cool. Uh, and then of course Jack Reacher. The first Jack Reacher was actually really good. The second one was a made for TV TNT movie, which was like I don't Super know how they upsetting. got away with that. It's just terrible. And McCore is also working on seven and eight. No shit. Yeah. See, God. They real they hit it. They man. figured it out. Yeah. I, I got chills when you just said that. Yeah. They, let's fuck it. I he can't said, wait. Yeah. It's so hard to not watch Fallout we're, right we're now. Gonna, I'm like, I need I need to you gotta, seven you gotta you gotta give it a little breath because oh. because Fallout is they figure let's put it this way. They figured out the formula on this one. Dude, and they may or may not have perfected it. That's in my thing. People have been telling me for so <laughs> long, like, oh, like, oh, they figure it out in three, or oh, they figure it out in four. No, they figured it out in five. And I feel like I was betrayed and lied to. And that's why I was kind of like, I don't know, guys. I, I think I, you're I, wrong. No, I, I disagree, feel like man. Four was the first one where it's like, hey, here's the world. We're setting it up. And it, when it ends with like, oh, here's Vic, you know, like it, this is gonna be the crew. For me, it was like Ghost Protocol is one of my favorites of the series because of how clever all of the action scenes were and how they built tension with that hotel scene the uh the walking through the hallway with that hologram thing i think is just like one of the coolest so things cool. i've seen i think we should rank the gadgets also like at the end of this maybe Dude. figure out a way because <clears throat> number one that's gadget one of I'm put right now is the and thing they put on the glass <laughs> they put on the glass and they and it turn it on and it just and fucking just disintegrates us. everything yeah which by the way total like show off move by ethan on this one he could have just broke the glass but he looks at her he's like Kee! Yeah. <laughs> like, I got cool gadgets. She's like, we don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Released on July 31st, 2015. Uh, <laughs> like I said, budget of $150 million, Box office of $682.7 million. Yeah. Runtime of two hours and 11 minutes. Yeah. Um, and this is the first time in a Mission Impossible movie, and first time in maybe ever in a movie, in movie history, where me and Gia were watching this, and we had to pause it to, to do something else for a second. And... I paused it and we still had like 45 minutes left and I was like, thank God. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. fucking God. <laughs> awesome. Because I yeah. want more of this. Because I, I hadn't watched the movie in a really long time. Probably yeah. not since it came out in theaters, should be told. And I was like, oh right, they have to do that. Oh right, they have to do that. Like, There's so many little missions that they go on that are fun but they don't beat you over the head in this. And I think that's the big difference between five and four is that four, they're like, we're going to draw a lot, even doing the plot synopsis for this was a lot easier because they were like, hey, Here's what we got to go after. Here's where it is. Here's how hard it is. Done. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's, this is not as convoluted as the other one. We're not bring, getting this guy to get the access code to get this thing, but then this guy's got to do this. We just got to jump into this giant tank and fucking change this drive. Why? I don't know. Because it's fucking cool and really scary. That's it. And then we're done. And then we go on to the thing. We got to get the prime minister. And then we're done. And that's a cool scene, too. And well, Alec motherfucking Baldwin's in this. Yes, and it's he great. is. Yes, he is. Well, we also get the, like, the, like, breakdown scene of, like, this is how it's going to go down. But they've perfected it at but, this like, point. You know in this I mean? show, like, well, they're like, it fails. We have to work another plan. And they don't do the same breakdown thing. Yeah. Then the other plan is what we get to see happen. Yeah. It's cool. I, I like this. I feel like again, this is this is what you get when you let a team like do their thing for five movies, and you they figure out the stride, they figure out the style, and the same thing you saw in like Fast and Furious, where like, oh, this is what this is. There can be varying degrees of it, but we're gonna probably not stray too far away from this cool formula because it's fun. It's fantastic, Nick. Plot, 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 plot. It's just a short version of it. Because because we're Sick, getting man. right to it, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, true. get ready because the music is starting to build and we are going straight into motherfucking Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know, but I bet seventy minutes from now someone will say we'll it. Say it. They'll and we'll, say they'll it. let us know what a Rogue Nation is, dude. But the music starts playing as we see the splash logos coming up, and yeah. I was just like, already, like, oh what God. is going on? Like, and I love it because we're just getting right fucking into it, ladies and gentlemen. We are in Minsk, Belarus. Where is that? I don't fucking know. I didn't bother to look up on a map. But let me tell you. We're in this really pretty field, and Benji straight up copying Josh McCuga's bit. If I was mm -hmm. Josh McCuga, mm -hmm. I'd be hella pissed because he's in the middle of this beautiful field in a ghillie suit, and he pops up, and it's Benji. Hey, what's going on, man? And they're talking, the and he's field. communicating back into Langley uh, with Brant, who now is the interim CIA, uh, IMF secretary, mm -hmm. while they're trying to pick another guy. And he's like, "Look." Just so you fucking know, the package is on the plane. And Benji's like, "I know the package is on the plane. Plan A didn't work. Plan B." Also didn't work. We're actually on plan C right now. And he goes, you have to get that package off that plane. Hammers at home. Brant 
kind of a little bit of like a, a, a whiner in this scene, mm-hmm. but that's okay. That's kind of his role. Uh, by the way, me, meanwhile, uh, Luther chimes in. Yeah, and he Brand's is. like, Luther, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> He's on a tower in Malaysia. He's like, they call me. I'm helping out. I'm on another gig, but I'm helping out. Dude, it's cool. I, I love I, this though. I so didn't say quickly. I, I didn't say I needed help. I needed assistance. <laughs> <laughs> They're different things. <laughs> uh, but they got. We're trying to cripple the plane remotely. My hacking in with this tower, Luther's helping out. And the idea here is that they're going to try to take the plane before it can take off. But guess what? The propellers start whining. And these propellers are really, really cool looking. And they're really ominous. And this plane's crazy looking. Uh, and it's going. Uh, and uh, the package is on the fucking plane. You got to get the package off the plane. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then all of a sudden, guess what? You thought you were going to have to wait. Yeah. You thought you were going to have to fucking wait. <laughs> Someone's going to pull their face off or run something. Run no. full out. He's running no. already, baby. <laughs> Just plan C is jump on to get onto the fucking plane. And they have a great back and forth where he's like, I'm on the plane. And Ben's like, you're in the plane? He goes, no, 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 I'm on the plane. (laughs) Open the door. door. And so finally they hack the ship, the thing, and the plane just starts (laughs) taking off. And this is where... We get what, like the arguably the coolest shot. The trailer so far. shot. The, the trailer the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment in the trailer where everyone's like, "Did I think I wasn't going to see this movie?" Because I was wrong. Yeah. Tom Cruise hanging off the side of this amazing cargo plane as it literally takes off in the first like five minutes. Five, <laughs> it yeah, looks not even. Like, oh shit. <laughs> And Benji's watching this happen, and he's like, "Shit!" <laughs> and it just is the, an amazingly long shot of him just hanging off this, literally hanging off the side of his plane. Uh, Benji, of course, hacks into the system, uh, opens the door, but it's the wrong door. And Tom Cruise <laughs> is like, "It's the wrong door." <laughs> Open the right door. Finally, opens the right door, and pa- Tom-, Tom Cruise just fucking ping pongs inside. It sucks him in. It so looks so hard. Him. I had to watch that like five times just to be like, "Jesus!" Because he like bounced off yeah. metal. At one point, he just bounced off metal and, and almost falls I off. I just the picture the show like, yeah. <laughs> like just super dead. <laughs> and then we get uh, we get a great comic second where he looks and he finally sees what the package is. And the package is a biohazard. It's VX gas bombs or, or missiles, whatever mm-hmm. the hell they are. Uh, and he's looking at him, and then we get a, another great beat where the guy's like, hey, there's something wrong in the back. So the soldier gets up and comes in to check something and looks over, and Tom Cruise is just there, like, not expecting to be seen, and just kind of tethering himself to the package, and he goes, and then he pops the chute and gets sucked out, and as he gets sucked out, bum, 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 bum. Oh, we get the theme. Fucking God. The we theme get, never gets old, dude. But it's like not just the theme, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fucking Steroids, man. nasty <laughs> thing. Holy shit. Yeah. This is like trumpets that are just like, dude, we've been up all Blaring, night doing man. God knows what, and we're ready to go. And of course, my favorite thing is back. We get the uh, the preview montage of what's happening in the, and it's in good. the movie. It's and actually it's good scenes. It's really cool yeah. scenes. Um, very, very fun. Before you go on, Nick, sure. let me give you some facts give me should some you facts. choose to accept them. This one's a little long, but there's a lot of stuff here that I, that I feel like it's worth saying. Sure. Tom Cruise performed a sequence where Ethan Hunt climbs on the outside of a flying Fucking airplane, psychopath. an Airbus A400M, without the use of visual effects or stunt double. At times, <laughs> he was crazy. suspended on the aircraft 5,000 feet in the air. Tom Cruise <laughs> stated in an interview that it was his intention to do the stunt hanging onto the, the plane in a way to outdo himself after the Khalifa climb stunt in Mission Impossible goes protocol. However, his idea raised objections by the crew due to safety. Oh shit. <laughs> being a certified pilot himself, he wanted to get the feel of being out on the wing or on the side of the airplane. A major obstacle to filming would be bird strikes. Bird strikes. Oh yeah. shit, yeah. yeah. That would suck. And wind resistance on the runway. To capture the action, a wind resistant custom frame for the camera was built and mounted onto the left wing of the plane. The other major problem would be keeping Cruz's eyes open in the presence of fast wind and runway particles so his eye specialist designed a special lens that can cover the entire eyeball. <laughs> Eight takes of the stunt were filmed. Christopher McQuarrie was very concerned that the actor <laughs> might panic suddenly, but was assured by Cruz to not stop filming until the <laughs> Stunt had been finished. I love oh, that. Yeah. Tom Cruise was struck in the body by a small pebble while filming one of the takes hanging from the plane. Cruise claimed that the impact hurt so badly he was certain that he had been badly injured and was afraid to look. Once the take was over, <laughs> fortunately, the pebble merely embedded in his clothing. <laughs> And he was amazed by how small it was. <laughs> Tom Cruise was injured six times during the making of this movie. God bless him. God bless him. And then just a, a little you know fun fact here. The first, this is the first Mission Impossible film in which every member of the team is a veteran of at least one previous stall. That's great. And, 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 That's and that so you great. feel that. Honestly, that doesn't surprise me. There's a scene later where he's straight up fucking tearing around the mid Atlas mountains in, in uh, Morocco on a bike and it's him doing it. Yeah. Like he's just rocking that <clears throat> shit, dropping knees left and right. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's legitimately him. There's no trailer. He's not on a trailer or anything. Dude, it's just him fucking. The crash seems so painful God. too. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in London, England right now, and Tom Cruise comes out of the tube, as they call it, and heads for the Vinyl Offer. Very cool record store. And if we ever go, when we go to London, we should check we out see if it's a real store because it looked like it was cool. Uh, of course, encounters a really uh, young shop girl, and she and they start speaking code right off the bat. She's like, a uh, she's a um, X wing pilot. In Last Jedi, oh, is she really? Yeah, oh, she's cool. one of like sort of the randoms that they cut to every once in a while. Did you know the Sand Snakes are too? Like two of the Sand Snakes from Game really? of Thrones. Yeah, it might be in Rogue One, but like they're in, they're pilots in really? Star Wars. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, they have this cool. She's like, "What are you looking for?" Classically, it's like jazz, and they have this cool back and forth, and it's of course all code for like the I am who I'm supposed to say. And it ends with, uh, "Why do you know why they call him Shadow?" And he goes, "Because he's got a light touch." Which I thought was really cool. I wrote that down. So she gives him a record, and it's a mission briefing. But before she does, she kind of fangirls down on him a little bit. She's like, "It's really you." Like, what's up? You know, yeah. talking about, like, I heard your single now. And like, he just doesn't up? say and anything, he's like, dude. Uh, inappropriate. No words. You know just saying? looks no, and just, just like, she's, I'm She says, like, are, like, all the stories can't be true or something. He just kind of smiles. Yeah, like, like so what okay. stories are you even hearing? Because the ones about my endowment, very true. The ones about my dick, yep, five that inches. Five and a half. Five and a half. And not working anymore because I'm getting the shit beat out of me for five movies straight. Uh, he goes in the booth, of course, and this record is, of course, the mission briefing, which is really cool. Puts it on the record, puts his hand on it, and then this holographic image comes up uh, and starts talking about the syndicate, man. Uh, listen, we Ethan suspects, just as you suspected, there's a shadowy organization you've been tracking for the last year. It's the syndicate, which, by the way, I believe we heard of at the, at the end, end of, of four, yeah. right? They talked about that, which I thought was cool because I actually mm-hmm. committed to that, which is cool. Uh, normally, we'd assemble your team for you, Ethan, but guess what? That's not going to happen because we are the fucking syndicate. You motherfucker. Motherfucker. Hey, and now we him. know who you are and where you are. And it's a, it's like, what a twist. What a great dude. little twist. Love that. L- uh, guess what, motherfucker? Uh, you come after us, we're going to kill you. You fuck with us, we're going to fucking kill you. That's all that's going to happen. Uh, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to face your fate. Uh, of course, this mesh will self message will self stuck in five seconds, and then gas starts filling the room up, and he looks over right as we see the uh, the the antagonist in this whole movie, which is Solomon Lang, and he's holding the girl it's hostage. Like Mitch McConnell, the creepiest motherfucker. Why creepy. does he talk that way? I'm Solomon. It's Lang. such a creepy voice. <laughs> Oh, we have to kill you, Ethan. Oh, we have to kill you. Ethan. Ethan. You're almost there. We have to kill you, Ethan. You're almost Ethan. there. Ethan. <laughs> it's very, uh, very much like that. In a baller ass like move, and in, in probably the most terrifying thing, as Ethan's trying to burst his way out of this gas and he's starting to pass out, uh, Solomon, of course, just puts one in the back of the shop girl's <laughs> head and then straight up just puts the gun down. Like, mm-hmm. I don't I'm need it good. anymore. I've mm-hmm. already done what I need to uh, do. Uh, and that's important because uh, this whole scene's important because we're going to reference it later. Uh, Ethan then passes out, and we go over to a Senate committee, secret Senate committee hearing over in Washington, D.C., where none other than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Alec Baldwin, has joined the team. And he's testifying in front of the Senate committee saying, basically, this IMF team, this is all bullshit, man. You got to shut this shit down. He has a nice before and after shot to punctuate his argument of the Kremlin. He's like, this is what it looked like before the IMF. This is after. (laughs) Which I was like, this is unnecessary. Okay, it wasn't their fault. Yeah, it was totally not their fault. It was a terrorist, terrorist attack that was like, uh, put on them, like made to look like it was them, yeah. but it wasn't them. We found that out. But That's the like idea, in Civil War with them showing all the Avengers, like, here are all the cities y'all fucked up. Like, right. check all this shit out. But the idea here is Hunley's making the argument that, listen, the IMF forces, uh, they're, they're a rogue entity out there, and most of the shit they do wouldn't, like, all of this stuff is consequential of the actions that they've taken. So mm-hmm. it's like a it's like a Batman Joker thing, right? Batman starts dressing in, in costumes, and all of a sudden they start dressing in costumes, and all it's all escalation. And he makes an argument that a lot of the shit they do, pure dumb luck. Which I was like, how dare you, sir? It's skill-based. And then I watched the rest of this movie, and I go, you know what? Yeah. A lot of it is luck. Solid point. Yeah. A lot solid, of it is luck. He's making a solid, solid point. point. Of course, Brian says, I can neither confirm nor deny so any of the funny. details of this. Um, without my without my secretary's permission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Let's see. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we cut away from that. Uh, Hunley wins the day because they go, guess what? The IMF force, done. done. Out of luck. Done. Yeah, yeah. What does he say? I think I wrote it down here. Just like uh, this is. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Today the it. luck runs out. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, the committee is hearing you shit out of luck, and today is the day your luck ran out. Uh, so the IMF force is done. Uh, of course, fulfilling Tim's prediction that of course the IMF force not not going to be a thing in this one. Uh, you're done. Uh, we find Ethan shirtless and kind of sweaty hot tied to a pole. I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> kind of sweaty uh, hot. Uh, <laughs> he must have been, 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 been a typo. Or must like been a typo. Mistype also, this next line, am I the only one who got rock hard at the side of this? I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Uh, His chest is ridiculous. He looks good in this. Yeah. He looks real good in this. I mean, he's like he's definitely getting older, but I feel like his own, his chest has only gotten wider really to like 
building his Put body. Put more out. muscles yeah. in there. He has the really good like uh, uh, everything, like arm everything. <laughs> get going to the mu- like. It looks it's when he's hanging tricep. up. It looks really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Look good a shadowy Tommy. figure walks in and it is a female. Uh, she starts putting all sorts of needly stuff on the table in front of him, uh, and she actually has a key which is attached to you guessed it a rabbit's foot, which I thought was a nice little callback to Mission Impossible. Wait, hold three. on, his shirts off, right? His shirts. Were they born born in labs? Now it's time to rank those abs. Uh, he looks really good in this, and I'm gonna put his abs at uh, Tom Cruise abs in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Number one. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. There you go. Solid abs. He's man. probably the only person well. uh, who's been shirtless in this uh, so far. Uh, <laughs> of course, Sean Ambrose, I think, was shirtless at one point. Sean but, Ambrose. Sean <laughs> Ambrose. But they were all super skinny because that was the 90s. Uh, early 2000s. Looks at the key. Looks at him. Of course, she turns around, and it is Rebecca Ferguson. Uh, Ilsa Faust. Ilsa Faust. Of course, starts taking off her shoes, starts rolling up her uh, sleeves, and you're like, she's going to fuck him up. What it's, is she going to do to why him? Why did she take off the shoes? Because she, because knew she, she was, was like, have fuck to you, fuck Jurassic World. Up. Like, these mm. movies came out around like, the same time. It's not practical. Like, it's not practical. I'm about yeah, to yeah. fucking kill you. I uh, also love her style of fighting in this because it's very, very much like, I'm just going to climb on top of you and bop you in the fucking head. Black awesome. Widow. It's yeah. great. When very she, much Black Widow. When she climbs on top of the dude and stabs him, <laughs> it was like, holy shit. And then, but not only stabs him, but then <laughs> rides him down as yeah. he falls. Yeah. Very that graceful. was brutal. Uh, of course, a bunch of other dudes come in and they're like, this is man work. And they start speaking Swedish German, just talking hell. They're just saying some shit. But who are these men? What are their nicknames? Uh, the Bone Doctor? The bo- <laughs> well, we meet Winter, who is uh, also known as the Bone Doctor. Uh, and he Gross. starts gut punching. Also, I, I, at one point, I think, because uh, I was so tired last night, I started filing him away as the Bone Collector, which mm-hmm. is a, just a fabulous Angelina Jolie Denzel Washington mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. So if I say that by accident, I apologize, everyone out there. I like it. My voice. You do it. You're doing your best Greg impersonation. It's right fair. There. The Bone Collector mm-hmm. starts beating the shit out of Ethan. Uh, Ethan says, uh, or, or tells the girl she should leave before this gets ugly. Or I th- actually, Ethan says, Says that you should leave before this gets ugly, and she shows Ethan the key, and it's like, well, you're like, oh, maybe Elsa is not as bad as we think she is. I feel like everyone in the room would should have been like, what the fuck are you doing? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just show him the key? Well, she didn't like. She kind of like palms. It was like, I'm a fucking yeah, but, but like, no like, one else saw because Victor's too busy. Four guys like standing. But dude, you don't understand how steroids work, man. It goes they they fucking blinds, dude. Yeah. They were just Peripheral looking vision. at those abs, man. They were like, I'm gonna punch them. Yeah. Uh, this is a great scene. Ethan just Ethan continues to double kick people, which I like a lot. Mm-hmm. Double kicks Vinter into the fucking pipe. <laughs> oh and man, that looked painful. She gets in the key and then she starts fucking people up. Just but also really, really again, I am a very, very lucky. Ethan didn't know that he would kick him and he would fall and, and hit the get pipe. concussed yeah. into a pipe. Didn't like, he? But didn't he? Exactly. There were also Ethan four knows other guys there. So yeah. I think like Ethan in his mind was like, I'm going to put some damage on this guy and then I'll figure everything else out. Uh, I'll take, I don't think he knew. I'll put some damage on the boss. I'll take care of the ads later. Yeah, you know? exactly. what's great is that, so she starts fighting and you're like, oh, she can. she's a fucking trained yeah, operator. She can hold her own. Ass. Great fighting style, but is outmanned here. What does Ethan do? He tries to get, he tries to get the key. <laughs> he can't get the key. He Can't looks reach. up, sees that the pole has anything else. And must have literally done this because oh, yeah, for I don't sure. know how a human being could do this, but literally hops up the pole. Lateral. Oh my god. It was down. so cool. <laughs> flips off. He I couldn't do. handle it, man. <laughs> he just flips over and then, yeah, starts pulling himself yeah. up, like jumping. Like, I don't know how it is. Yeah. But flips over, kicks a dude, lands on I- Ilsa's tum tum, and they have a little moment. That's all he does, like, right? It was some straight like, up like American Ninja up. Warrior stuff. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Jesus, uh, they kick the shit out of everyone. Of course, there's two dudes outside that are completely fucking useless. But everyone goes down, and Ethan has a great line. He looks at her, and he's like, "We haven't really met before, have we? Like, have we met before? <laughs> like, do I know you? Because you're hulking a brother fucking up right now, uh, and yeah. it's super cool. Uh, of course, they, the guys they, start. What's up? They do show like the outside guys when they start beating up Ethan, yeah. kind of like go to the door and be like, oh. There's people getting beaten up in there. Yeah, I mean, so I kind of feel are... like that's why it's clear that they're not coming in. Do the other guys have guns, though? The other four dudes? Lots of people have guns. Either way, like a gun would be uh, really useful. Ilsa helps him get down to the catacombs down below, and then as they're walking away, she shuts the gate and goes, I got to go back in. And he's like, what are you doing? We got to go. And she's like, I got to go back in. You got to just get the fuck out of here. Bye. You uh, killed them all, not me. Yeah, you killed them all, not me. Uh, and then <clears> she goes, you got about five seconds, and I'm going to tell them where you are. Uh, proving that she is on his side. Maybe we don't know, mm-hmm. but she wanted mm-hmm. to get... We don't know what's going on with her. She's a mercurial character. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. Um, but again, what I love about it is we don't know what's going on with her, but in a fun way, not in a like, we have no fucking right. clue. It's yeah, just more yeah, like, yeah. we know you're either this, this, or this, but you could be a little bit of all mm-hmm. three. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's fun. And shout out to the the actress, Rebecca Ferguson here, because I think she's awesome. Great job. Great. Yeah. Very, very good she energy. Literally, like I said role. earlier, she matched Tom Cruise. Yep. Yeah. Like, I believed in her being as badass as the guy that just fucking 
jimmied off the pole. And I don't know her background. I jimmy off the pole, though. But she moves. Man, she can she move moves. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, of course, goes up and calls Brant. Uh, it says, go secure, and they have a cool moment. All the cell phones in this, I think, are really cool at this point. Uh, the London terminal is compromised. The shop girl is down. Uh, all I have to go off is a face. Uh, and they want uh, uh, they wanted information from me. They want to know who we are, how we operate, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but he figured out one important thing where he recognized the bone collector uh, as a guy who he thought was dead. Mm-hmm. And so he goes, I need you to uh, start looking, gathering intel on former operatives as long as they're dead or presumed dead uh, and start with this bone doctor guy. And Brant's like, yo, man, I got some hard news. I got to tell you, uh, your parents are dead. You knew that. From three, uh, but also the IMF done. We're done shut down again. Sorry, dude. Uh, you got to He's like, and then Ethan gets it. He realizes this is going to be a much longer mission than I thought it was going to be. You never had this call. Forget I called. You lost contact with me. Delete my cell phone number and stop sending me dick pics. Yeah, we're done. Unfriend me we are on done. Facebook. I'm following me. Uh, and then uh, uh, Brant goes, "Can you find the man you saw?" And then Ethan goes, "I won't stop until I do," because he killed yeah. the shop girl, and she was kind of, you know, she was cute. Uh, and he goes, "Good, because this might be our last mission, Ethan. Make it count. Uh, but first, maybe take care of that fucking bullet wound in your stomach because you got shot in the stomach. He got mm-hmm. shot in the stomach. Yeah, he's like, yeah. oh right? shit. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> then we get the cut. Yeah. Well, no, not yeah. But uh, Brant, and then we have a nice scene between Brant and Huntley, where Huntley accuses or uh, uh, Huntley accuses Hunt of making up the syndicate, uh, being both the arsonist and the firefighter or whatever that was. Uh, Huntley's gonna find him. Uh, set your watch, Brant. Ethan Hunt is living his last day as a free man. Alec and then it cuts Baldwin, dude. to six months later. <laughs> Which I thought was a great line. What a great comedic beat where it's so like, yeah. last day, we're fighting him today, yeah. and then it's six months later. Uh, and I think they're in Cuba at this point. We don't get a Chiron, but later he makes reference to the fact that we tracked Hunt down to Cuba. So I think they're in Havana right here. Yeah, it's at Havana. Well, uh, he, but, well, oh, we do yeah. get a Chiron for Havana. Well, no, it just said six months later. I don't think we, I, I rewound it. I didn't see it. At some say, point, I we got Havana. Havana. Yeah. Did it say Havana? Well, great. We're in Havana. I nailed that part. Uh, we cut to Ethan, and he's doing all sorts of body he exercises. Got a beard, dude. Beard. Why? Jacked out. He's weird. Doing to tell you, time's passed, and he hasn't been taken. But they care told us time passed. <laughs> it's true. They said six months later. Uh, he's doing all sorts of push ups. Back at Langley, we're intercutting here where Brant uh, is now the bitch boy of Alec Baldwin, and they're running an op. We see a bunch of operatives come out of the cars, and they're going to go get Ethan, and we're like, oh no, what's going to happen? They go up the stairs, and Ethan's just, he doesn't spend anything because he's doing his calisthenics he's doing his workout uh, and they break in and of course uh, Ethan's not in there Mm-mm. no where's Ethan Ethan looks over and we see the Eiffel Tower he's in fucking Paris dude. Yeah, you gotta mm-hmm. get up pretty mm-hmm. early better, in the morning man. if you want to get old Ethan Hunt it was a fun little moment it was. Um, very code there's another part of uh, there's another part I forgot in here where Alec Baldwin has a great line where he's like the first time I heard about the IMF was when I started at Langley when they had just broken into the CIA yeah. headquarters yeah. which is cool I was like that's a cool line world building like, man these guys are they don't fuck around like they're they're, they're all over the place of course uh, Ethan's watching them on a cell phone that he had set up which with no power which I thought was interesting how long has that cell phone been out there a lot doesn't it's matter it's Nokia dude Those it things last Nokia. forever um <laughs> Uh, of course, we see uh, a hand-drawn picture of Ilsa and Solomon Lang. These are the only two faces he remembers, and those are the ones he's tracking down. We see a bunch of other operatives, and we see a bunch of news clippings of things that have happened that were quote-unquote accidents, but had world-ending consequences for the economies or the or the something those happened. Areas, like, yeah, banks yeah. going down, uh, civil fire, war. Air, there's an airplane that went down, and the, the, all of these things caused some sort of something economic or destabilization. And uh, Ethan thinks that's all part of the syndicate. Reminded me a lot of Unbreakable. Uh, a lot yeah, of unbreakable, yeah, a lot sense. of uh, quantum of solace. Also, just going to put that out. That movie sucked. They're taking a lot of a lot of quantum of solace. And Remember, made it good parts. Quantum <laughs> was uh, quantum was this organization that did that, but not quite as fun. Uh, and then we cut over to Benji, who was just senselessly pimping Halo Five. Sponsored by Halo. Brought to you by Halo <laughs> Five. Nice product placement. I need down a there. weapon. Uh, Benji, of course, just out in the middle of this thing, and then as people pass, switches over his monitor like he's not playing. But everyone's like Benji. We saw you playing. <laughs> you're, 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 you're the biggest music. fucking monitor that ever. Is, yeah, we saw you from loud. the other side of this Console room. Scrub, uh, somebody <laughs> comes <laughs> in and hands Benji an envelope that says, uh, and he opens it up and says, congratulations, you've won free tickets to the Vienna Opera. And he's very excited and not at all suspicious. Not at all suspicious. Not at all. No, I'm very it's glad like, about come this. Come on. Uh, then he gets a call from upstairs and he goes, oh, it's that time again. God damn it. And he goes up and we we, we discover that he's been being, uh, been being grilled on a weekly basis by Hunley. Uh, hey, have you heard? From Ethan, if you had any contact, they're making him take a lie detector, te- detector test, which we don't really g- get 
But he hasn't heard from him, so I guess he's passing this test mm. on, on the he, up and up. No, because he definitely is he like, I don't owe times, anything right? to him. Right. He's I not don't my give a shit. He's not my friend. <laughs> yeah, how does he do it? Those are all lies. He's I assume he's stepping on the thumbtack. You know, the classic trick. The classic trick, right? Uh, basically, Huntley's like... I'm unfamiliar with this classic trick. You, you step on a thumbtack to like cause your body to have like a reaction so that when you're lying... So line, it sets a baseline. Yeah. That's so you, you tell the truth, but you step on this thumbtack. And it's always yeah. high anyway. Or you yeah. clench your asshole. Oh, you, yeah. If you real guys, or if you want to really do it the real way, you put the thumb back in your asshole, Ooh. Um, and then, then clench that fucker. Yeah, because they, they, they check, because they check your, they check your shoe. When you go to the CIA headquarters, they sure, check your shoe, but yeah. they won't check your asshole. And yeah. they, they get a little pinprick, and you go, "Congratulations, now you've got hepatitis." I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of, I was thinking of Step Brothers, where he's like, "I calmed my, uh, or I use Ninja Focus to slow my heart rate." <laughs> that's, that's what I was picturing. He that's did. What he does, yeah. that's uh, of course, Hunley starts showing him pictures of all these things, and they're like, "Ethan's the bad guy," and he goes, "I don't." He's like, "You guys have it all fucking wrong, okay?" Ethan's out there doing God knows what, and I'm in here day after day, shutting down cases, solving shit, and paying for his fucking sins. You think I'm his friend? I'm not his friend. I hate that motherfucker, right? Of course, lying through his teeth because we know mm -hmm. that Benji mm -hmm. loves him. Uh, and then Benji gets back to his desk, sees the opera tickets, and goes, You know what? Fuck this place. Daddy's going on vacation to Vienna, Austria, right? That's where you go because mm -hmm. you got these free tickets. Why bother asking any questions? Looks fucking fantastic in this suit. He's very happy go lucky. Yeah. Gets off the tube. Uh, about to go up to the opera, gets about five feet, yeah, not even three paces, and someone slaps his chest with an envelope. Guess what, motherfucker? You're on a mission. And immediately, I pictured that uh, the San Andreas meme that's going around. The oh shit, here, here we go, go again. again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, of course, is great. He gets a he gets a playbill for this uh, the opera, which I can't remember what it's called. And it's probably I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, matter at all. <coughs> he gets a playbill, and then he gets glasses, puts them on. Hey Benji, what's up? And he's like, God damn it, Ethan. Like yeah, you like basically, not for nothing. You've just fucked up my entire life. <clears throat> you've just fucked me. I am now an international terrorist by just doing this. I'm screwed. I'm disavowed. How dare you? But okay. he's actually pretty delighted because he knows he's on a mission, which is great. Um, it's just so silly that like he had no idea that it was gonna ha this was gonna happen. You know? I think he had some level. You know, yeah, he, he looked some genuinely level he shocked. Up. And like also, he looked genuinely excited when he won the thing. I wonder if he was trying to win it beforehand. Who knows? Probably not. But it doesn't matter. Maybe Ethan just knows he's a big opera fan. Uh, Ethan says, look, here's here's how it is. It's a very simple thing. I need you up there. Eye in the sky. Solomon Lang's going to be here. We know that. Uh, I need you looking through all the all the people in the audience till we find him, and then we're going to take him out, and then you're going to just go home. You're going to get on a plane. No one's going to know you were here. That's it. He has this great line where he's like, that's all you want me to do is just look at faces? I thought you could have given me something more dramatic. And he goes, you want drama? Go to the opera. Yeah. And of course he walks up <laughs> and it's this amazing opera. Uh, we walk by the Chancellor of Austria where he's like, please tell me it's a coincidence that the Chancellor of fucking, like this giant foreign dignitary is here at this opera right now. Uh, at the same time, we're looking for international terrorists. Otherwise, we're like, this is not good. Of course, we see uh, a police officer who's just standing there and God, is he good looking. Holy shit, this dude. You can see this dude's dick from his chin. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking Abs about. Abs all day, every day. Dick from his chin. I don't know chin. who you're talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, no idea who's talking about. You didn't see Hottie McHotterton in the fucking Polizei no. outfit? Well, we're going to get to him in a second. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Benji starts setting up camp. Takes out the playbill. Like, actually, first he uses his phone to unlock the door, which is really fucking cool. Yeah, I like that they don't make any. They're like, we just got the tech now. We got it's stuff. ten years it's later. Cool. Door open. We see the lock mechanism on the so digital awesome. screen. Really cool. Uh, opens up the playbill, and guess what? It's a laptop computer. Honestly, you talking about the coolest tech? I think this might be That's my favorite. Fucking yeah, because cool. I saw. I'm like, this is so cool. I love that it was black and white. Like it was just so fucking cool. Yeah. It was really thoughtful. Cool. You didn't really, think really that cool. like opening the doors of the car with their palms was the coolest cool fucking too. thing? No, I mean I this want that technology so bad. I feel like we're there, dude. right? Teslas. No, they don't. It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, the window. Looks I wanted to have want, a, yeah. an obnoxiously, overtly overdone like moment where circles come around. Yeah. and Digital Got stuff it. reads out about yeah. my hand. We need I don't circles. want it just be a palm print and the door opens. Right. That's stupid. Mm. What's the point? You guys are making sense. I want that extra shit. Yeah. Yeah, but then, it's not on the glass either. The glass is the coolest thing. You would think that maybe that if someone broke that glass, very expensive to repair. Yeah, you this would imagine. Whole, this whole Playbill thing, like the digitized look reminds me of like those, the e-ink e-readers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, it looks like black and white. Yeah, 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 yeah. It like looks like paper. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really cool. Uh, <laughs> of course, uh, Benji taps into the system and starts uh, uh, looking through faces in the crowd. Meanwhile, who should arrive? It's Ilsa. And this lime green dress she's wearing is fucking everything. fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's everything. I don't, and I'm gonna take a second here, ladies and gentlemen. 
I don't know what she does for her workouts, but it's working. I'm guessing squats and deadlifts, if I had to guess, because her legs, her her thighs. I picture her just murdering guys. And her fucking just back muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, her muscles are on fucking yeah. point in this. She is j- 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 jacked. She has those shoulders that I've always wanted, but I just don't have the dedication. She looks to the like she's part of the climbing in. community. Dude, I don't know what she does. She looks fucking great in this. She walks up in this dress, and it's awesome. Uh, uh, let's see. Ethan Ethan does the same thing where he picks a lock on his phone, goes behind the stage, uh, and spots the dude, uh, this blonde guy, Blondie McBlonderton, that I think also Benji may have spotted and said, hey, this guy's doing some weird shit. Yeah. Go over, take a look at him. This guy's got a giant flute. I don't know what this instrument is, but it's really cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why is it like three flutes put together? I don't know. I thought it was an oboe at first, but I was like, well, no, this was is just, a flute. Was it not just one flute? I thought it was like this big when he picked it up. No, it had like other pipes yeah, and shit in it. It was like this big. <laughs> is it? It was long. Yeah. yeah. This thing was like this long. Flutes are tiny. Flutes are I don't know. I've never long. played a flute. Well, all of Tim's friends growing up did. Yeah, all so of Tim them knows. It's true. Uh, Ethan goes backstage to do that while Ilsa sets up. And we, we get a lot of different things happening here. Uh, and it's all time. amazing. It's this whole scene great. with the opera playing, like everything about this, I'm like, this is fucking rad so, as hell. That guy the takes a it's best. Rad as hell. Ilsa uh, moves a pipe and takes a gun out of that, which is cool. It makes, it makes a little pipe gun, which is dope. She sets up in a pagoda uh, and looks up and sees the chancellor, right? Mm-hmm. And then does this thing. Where I don't know if this is what they teach you in sniper school, but she puts her foot up on the the counter and just kind of leans into the shot. And I'm like, I just want to stay in this moment forever. forever. <laughs> it looks for it looks, fucking ever. Looks like it was an alto flute. Alto flute. That yeah. Very, yeah. very, very, very long yeah. flute. That makes yeah. sense. I was going to say oboe, but alto flute. That makes sense. Bunch of different um, pieces. Ilsa takes a clear shot of Emperor Palpatine over there, Chancellor Palpatine, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Benji spots. Hottie McHotterson fucking sweet dick cop upstairs in the in the lighting booth. That's the guy that you thought was so hot? Oh, fucking this guy's good. Bring up a fucking picture of this guy. This guy is like, I don't think Barry could find this it. This guy is a fucking I'll, I'll look around. stunner I of a human disagree, being, right? though. I don't think this guy. Yeah, He's got a jawline. No, I'm not talking about Blondie McFluterton back no, in the back. Yeah, I'm talking you're about, talking about a security guard with the about, other sniper. L- what are we going to use this nightstick for? Hottie police eye officer. What? what was his gun? Nightstick. Yeah. Yeah. I heard nice dick. Mm. You hear what you want to hear. What are we going to use this nice dick for? You hear what you want to hear. But like, did he have a weird gun too? The other one had a weird gun in this. Yeah. Because his gun. Well, had to sneak it into the office. Every time like it cut to it, I was like, did he, he had a gun have, made does of he a have couch. one of those Nintendo Super, the Super <laughs> Nintendo? It's all like Super different. Scopes. Yeah. It's uh, like a modular yeah, variant. Yeah, yeah. Like, Ethan sees the blonde guy and, and he immediately takes his tie off, which I thought was a cool pro mm-hmm. maneuver. He's like, ah, oh, this is going to turn into some shit, right? Jumps down, starts fucking with the guy, grabs the flute, they stand up, and Ethan's done standing up a good five seconds before oh, the other guy's yeah. done standing up. This guy's tall as fuck, and Ethan's like, this is where I love this because he's like, <laughs> like he has this <laughs> yeah. moment where he's like, fuck, this is going to hurt. Or is the other <laughs> guy just like 5'10"? I mean, it's possible to talk to him a little short. Look at, there, the, the, the the guy? Look at how fucking good looking that guy is. I don't is. like his face. Too much uh, forehead. You know why? He's All 29? Dick. That's just his dick. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I don't. Wait, dude, how tall is Jeremy Renner? Because there are so Probably many five, shots nine, five, ten. where him and Tom Cruise are eye to eye, and I'm like, is there some Go trickery back, Barry, going on back. here? Uh, they sometimes wear lifts and stuff like that. Maybe there's an Apple card. How tall is Jeremy Apple Renner? Grade. I think he's 5'10. Barrett, cut back five, to the nine. line. 5'9. Yeah, there you go. Which Why means he's probably 5'8. Because let's be honest, he wouldn't be the first. Quasi celebrity to lie about his height. Uh, Ilsa is in the pagoda. She's doing things. She sees the dude. She has to make a choice, right? What's going on? Uh, meanwhile, actually, no, she doesn't make a choice. She just she's just right holding on the chance, right? Yeah. And Tom Cruise sees her and is like, "Shit, what's going on?" Meanwhile, he's getting his ass kicked by this tall guy. Gets pounced off. Benji's trying to figure out what the, what the, what's wrong with the electrical. Keeps hitting the panel, <laughs> so and all great. the things start going I up love and down. This. And we have this great moment where Tom's like, "Okay, I have." Or Ethan's like, "I have a, a second to relax." And then the panel starts rising and just brings him right to the bad guy. He's like, "Fuck!" Again, Again, some just, sound the entire time. Just more like like clever writing and Good clever sort of choreography. Mm-hmm. Like it's just great. Uh, we get a great shot where the guy's like strangling him with the flute gun, and then the truss comes up and ta- and Ethan like puts his feet on it and just rides it up and flips over him, oh. and then kicks him off, which is violent. Uh, takes the gun, looks up, uh, realizes there's a, there's he sees Ilsa, but there's also a guy in the booth and doesn't know. We get this shot right here. We do get that shot right there. Oh, That's shit. the shot I'm talking about with her foot up. Oh, oh yeah, careful. God, damn. Uh, yeah. Has to make a call. Who's he going to shoot? Does he cool trust gun. Ilsa? Who's this hot cop? It'd be a shame to take him out of the world because I could Jesus, not be more in this his scene. DNA is great. Like I was there. I'm just like, what? What's yeah, he going to do? What's he going to do? What choice and is the he going to make? Conclusion is so good. Perfect. Smart choice. Smart choice. Looks over. Shoots the chancellor. Hell yeah. Right. Uh, shoot the hostage, as we say in speed. Right. If you're winning's out, shoot the hostage. Wings him. All shit. How hell breaks loose. They pull the chancellor out. 
Uh, it's Ilsa just a flesh wound. They yeah. make sure to say that. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> Ilsa realizes she's missed her shot. Meanwhile, Benji's like, fuck this. I don't want, I, I'm, I'm getting in this shit. Jumps in, <clears throat> immediately gets his ass kicked by this dude, this this cop in the lighting uh, booth. But Ilsa comes and saves the day and shoots him in the, in the back. And then he hits the deck because he's not sure what the hell's going on. He hits all the lights, blinds her. She bounces out, starts running away. Tom, uh, Ethan starts running away, catches up with her. And he's like, hey, uh, need a way, need a way out of this? Because I got one. Not a great way out. He should have probably prefaced, but a way out nonetheless. They go up as all the cops start raiding uh, the building, and, and we see Solomon Lang for the first time because he's like, he's got, he's looking through the dudes. I forgot to mention he's looking through the guy's uh, ocular cavity. Mm-hmm. He's got one of those Context. cool Jeremy Renner contact lenses in from the last movie, and he sees Ethan. He's like, "Hello, Ethan." Which is another w- a really really you. cool gadget. Yeah. Ghost protocol. Yeah. I love yeah. that fucking part. But um, I like that they move. They use it here. Don't really call a lot of attention to it. It's just like, hey, this is a thing we've already. Established. Did um, I feel like they did? Did call Ilsa like, know that well, Tom Cruise the was the one aiming? Like or like? No, no. I don't think she had seen him at all. Right? Like, I mean, she just knew she had to kill. She the was focused. On I think one she thing. saw a body though, but I don't know if she. Yeah, she saw them fighting. Yeah, earlier, but like. Didn't she? I don't think so. She seemed oblivious to everything because she was in like part of the set. Yeah. So I, I don't think that she was like because those people later we find out. No, oh, she the, wasn't oblivious to everything because she knew that there was two people there to check her ass. I don't, I don't think she knew that. I think he confirmed. I think it he to figured her. that out oh, later. Yeah, because yeah. oh, he see. tells her he was like, yeah, later. Oh, in the so car. the other dude was. Redundancy. Safety, and then the and then other dude was, was to kill, kill you, you. you yeah, yeah. or yeah. probably just kill you. Period. Because yeah, let's be honest, yeah. she is the least trustworthy part of the syndicate organization. Mm. This is not a person you really want working for you because she has proved time and time again that she cannot be trusted. Uh, either way, they go up to the roof. Uh, and we have a nice little moment where she sits for a second. She goes shoes, and and makes Ethan take her shoes off. And he does in one swoop take two shoes off. Hot. What a badass. Hot. Hot. Badass. Uh, they go over to the, he's, he's stolen, of course, a big uh, spooling of rope. Uh, and they go over to this flagpole and he does a little cool tie to it, pulls it, and it, it yanks a little too, like, this is not stable. <laughs> no, not and stable. It <laughs> he's like, ah. and then the cops burst in. He's like, we got to just we, go. We're going. Great moment with the music flares as he pulls her and, like, and they, and they kind of rappel down with one hand as he's holding on to her, which is cool. Yep. Uh, they land, walk away casually as the pole just slams down behind him <laughs> and they have a moment. <laughs> No, like anyone. <laughs> no, we're I'll good. We're good. Going. Meanwhile, so here, here's a fact for you. Uh, this it. is the first Mission Impossible film not to feature the jump and hang scene made famous in Mission Impossible from 1996. Yeah. and I feel yeah. like this was the closest thing we got. Eh, to good that. enough. We don't need uh, that. Scene. There was also like he, there's a moment where he puts the tie around his hand to oh, slide do down, that? and it's just like that's cool. That's a cool little Promo touch. Over, yeah, because yeah. sliding down a rope would hurt. fuck your hand up. Oh, I don't know that a tie good. would do enough, but it would help. Climb up a rope and it kind of makes your your dick feel good. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. 100%. What was up with that? It's weird, right? Uh, I mean, We're it's a weird phenomenon. Rubbing on your cock, you know? What are you talking you about? Mean, yeah, like a pole. No, 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 no. I mean, like, like the climbing the rope in gym class. Yeah, ropes and like we poles. Didn't have, we didn't it was have weird. Ropes like as a kid, class. like I was like, why? That's yeah, poles. Feels good. It's weird. Yeah. No, but I used to fuck my bed. So mm. nope. Maybe Let's that's the same thing. Move <laughs> on. We're moving on. No edge talking today. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Benji pulls up. He's like, get in the car. All hell's breaking loose. Uh, but before that happens, <laughs> they, <laughs> they look over and we, we get a quick shot of inside the chancellor's car. And they look down and there's a briefcase in there and it just lights up for a second and boom, explodes. Boom. Yeah. Fucked up. Again, let's keep moving. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck happened? Benji pulls up. And is like, get in the car. We fucked up. And I'm burned. I'm pissed off at you, but it doesn't matter. We get in the car. Tom goes, I got to search you. Sorry. Starts taking all sorts of stuff off her, including this uh, lipstick. And she's like, it's a very hard uh, shade to find. So please be careful with that. Like kind of like, hey, this Love is an that. important mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he goes, shit, I didn't see it coming. Obviously, like, did you know about the other people? This is where we get the conversation where she's like, uh, listen, I'm under. He's like, I know you're undercover. You must be an MI6 operative or something like we, I know you're an operative. I know you're trustworthy. What the fuck's going on? She's like, you got to let me go. Right. I got to go back under. And he's like, I'm not going to send you back in there. She's like. You gotta let me go. Of course, the guy starts chasing him, starts shooting after him. We get there. We get the realization that she was going to shoot the chancellor, uh, and then, but there was a person there to make sure that if she didn't, uh, he was going to shoot the chancellor, and then the other guy was going to kill her. So that's where it goes. And then the bomb, of course, was a third redundancy, overplanned maybe a little bit, but guess what? Got the job done. Needed. Lane is a genius. Lane that's his whole genius. thing. He understands every move that everyone's going to make. Uh, Ethan, it's very I'm true. An, I'm a genius, Ethan. You're getting a lot closer. That's really good. Yeah, it's real good. And then the last fact I have, and this is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but with this character, this Lane character, Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first movie where Ethan doesn't have any physical contact 
with the enemy. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that I look over. <laughs> you try to get in character with the face? Because <laughs> I was... Because I was... You were going to say something. I was going to go... Ethan, I want to touch you, Ethan. <laughs> Ethan, oh, oh, man. Creepy as shit. Creepy as shit. Uh, she's like, you got to let me go. Listen, they're behind me. You got to let me go. He's like, how, how am I going to find you? She goes, you got everything you need to find me. And then just curls herself out of the car uh, as they speed off. Jeez, dude. Like, what a fucking That looks badass. so fucking no scabs, painful. Right? Yeah. No, well, because she tucked and rolled. I mean, her, her or shoulders are still. Her elongated and rolled. Her yeah, shoulders you, are still You get that rolling asphalt. motion. <laughs> That's a spy uh, thing. I've, like, fallen down barely, like, going fast on a roller blade. <laughs> <And you're laughs> you're bruised for Tons hours. of scabs and shit. Uh, you know, sporing all night. So... <laughs> uh, she bangs out, and they and the syndicate car comes and picks her up. Uh, meanwhile, Benji and Ethan go to the safe house, which is I like the safe house because it's kind of a rundown boat, mm -hmm. and even the safe house itself doesn't work. No, proving that we're kind of getting to the end of whatever the MIF like uh, resources are at his disposal. <laughs> IMF, excuse me. Um, and he go, they get in, and he goes, "Listen, here's what you're going to do, uh, Benji. You're going to go home. You're going to tell him I duped you into this." I kidnapped you or whatever. Just mm -hmm. burn me. Tell him everything. Be honest and just. Tell just, him I was there to kill the dude. Yeah, tell him I was there to kill the chancellor and just burn me. And Benji, proving that he's a fucking ride or die motherfucker, is like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm a part of this team. I'm your friend. More importantly, I'm your friend. And like, I'm not going to let you do this alone. And this is a very important mission. So why don't you just fucking tell me what's going on, uh, so I can help out? And he goes, okay, fine. Uh, and then they bring up the picture of all the operatives, and he's like, I've been tracking all these operatives. I've been tracking all these. These news things that that seemingly are accidents, but I think they're all tracked back to the syndicate, and I think it's this one guy, but this uh, this 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 guy, but I don't know who the fuck he is. Um, no lips, this guy. Zero lips, which is no super lips. scary. Yeah. Uh, basically, this team has been. It just wants to destroy the system from the inside out. They're the anti IMF team. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah but they're getting cool. crazy because killing the chancellor is not like them. Like no. Boldy just killing, yeah. assassinating a dignitary. This must be a new phase. And this Solomon guy is the link. Uh, he's always there. He's the key. Uh, Benji just is like, look, dude, um, I'm in. Okay. I think he says like, I can't protect you. I'm not, it's, I'm not your decision. I'm a field agent. God damn it. I passed the test. I know the risk. And more than that, I'm your friend. So I'm staying. And that's all we're going to say about that. And then Tom Cruise just looks over me and goes, Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. We're in. Uh, where do we start? Well, we got to find Ilta. Uh, and, and she's like, how do we do that? And he figures out, of course, it's not just lipstick. This is a thumb drive. Uh, very, very cool. I made a note here. Kevin, please buy a bunch of those lipstick thumb drives for the office because that's just fine. Was, was cool. it a lipstick at all? I don't know. Kevin, yeah, can you? you know what? I think it was oh, just no, a cool I, thumbstick. Probably. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But either way, this Kevin, nice can you touch. get me a thumb drive that looks like a twang bottle? Yeah, and so like when I when I get beat up and I'll be like, hey, check out this. It's a good flavor. Yeah, it's really hard to find. Yeah. and I'll wink at you. Yeah, and I'm like, it's just the lime flavor playing. <laughs> yeah. It's not hard. But to then find. you pop it into the computer, and, and then but when I pop it, 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 it into the, I'm up. Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. that has really a USB fun. ever done anything like that? <laughs> you can make it. Uh, of course, Ilsa's back in a hotel and she has to face off uh, against Solomon and some dude tries to touch her and she just fucking WWE takes his ass. Takes him down. Just takes his ass out. Uh, and then Solomon uh, is basically like, you got to prove your worth to me. Um, he's like, you've let him go twice. You've seen him twice. Yeah. And he's gone. And she's like, listen, I got it. I'm going to go fucking yeah. kill this dude. Like, I'll prove my worth to you. And he goes, and he points the gun at her, but instead kills the dude behind him. Crazy. Just being sucking. Just sucking. That felt really unfair. It was unnecessary. He's just killing him because, I don't, I, I guess she took you down. Like, I just wanted to hear like, fuck, ow. Yeah. <laughs> that really <laughs> hurt. Ow. That really hurt. Uh, yeah. I really wanted some, like, the other dude that's still alive being like, what the fuck was that for? Yeah. Um, she was doing a great job. <laughs> and then, he, so she grills him and says, did, did Ethan say anything? And she goes, he knows about Morocco. He knows about the power plant, but he doesn't know what's in it. Uh, and she goes, well, how, and he's like, how are you going to find me? She goes, don't worry, he'll find me. Mm. And we're we're not sure if she's good or bad in this. We're still like, oh, yeah. okay. What's happening? Watching? What's happening? Um, Ethan, it's turning of course, me on, though, I got to say. Uh, Ethan and, uh, it's, I got to say. It's, it's really, really turning, turning me on. on. Ethan and Benji uh, look at the thumb drive and find uh, the schematics for something called a skiff. A super a secure computer facility in Morocco, and guess where we're going next, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, Casablanca, mm. Morocco. Um, which I actually don't think it was Casablanca; I think that was Marrakesh, or at least they filmed parts of it in Marrakesh. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. 
Uh, that's there where they go and they find uh, they go to this little cool like <laughs> villa outside. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Find a note written in the lipstick shade, which I thought was nice. Yeah. Um, so it's like, come on in, dude. I'm in the pool. Uh, she's in the pool, of course, tra practicing breathing, and it's just not good enough. She can barely get to two minutes. It's cool though. It's like really that cool. little sleeve that, that she has on. It's like real note. life. I made another note, Kevin. Please order by eight of those. Uh, because we need those cool sleeves. Yes. I need to know how much oxygen they I got exist. left. There's really, really cool, cool one of us need them. <laughs> and we each one of them need yeah. them at any given point. Um, she's timing her breath, but it's not good enough. And let me tell you, dude, this is just, this is a great scene. All these people have such great chemistry. I mean, I know they just have great they chemistry. Really do, man. All of them in this one. Uh, meanwhile, back at, back in uh, Langley, Brant meets up with Luther and fills him in. Says, dude, we got to find Ethan before the CIA goons do. And Luther isn't interested. He's like, dude, motherfucker, I've been through war with this dude. I'm not helping you burn this guy. I don't fucking know you, bro. I wasn't in the last movie. I don't fucking know you. Um, and he goes, listen, uh, we're going to find him and keep him safe because if Hunley finds him, it's open season. Like they've, they've got a kill order on this guy. Uh, all I know. Uh, and and uh, he Luther goes, threatened Luther him. goes, all I know <laughs> is uh, you chose to work for Hunley. Uh, and then a brand goes, all I know is that you chose to resign. Straight up calling him out. But then he also, I think it was a line that was probably written out. Was he what he, I think he meant to say was all I know is you chose to resign and dress like Indiana Jones. Because it was very weird what he was wearing. And why not? Very he, Indiana Jones. Just give him his hat. Another his hat. quick thing that, like, what about timing? Because it, 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 in the uh, last movie, we get that, like, Syndicate is introduced. Then in the beginning of this movie, they're like, he's been obsessed with Syndicate for a year. Which means, I would come to understand, is that... that, that uh, well, he'd been, like, six months in since at the record shop. But he hasn't been able to prove. That's the problem with Syndicate. No, 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 what, I, what I'm saying is, IMF was working... Seems like at least a year from the last movie, which means that uh, Vic Rames' character was probably on, on some teams or something to do with freelancing. The, <laughs> well, I mean, he was working at IMF at the time, right? He didn't quit till after IMF got hey, shut down. Listen, man, if I know something about these. Why isn't he hanging out with Renners? All easy I'm come, easy go. Yeah. You can just get into the CIA and go. I'm not working for you guys anymore. And then when you decide to work for him again, they hire you right back. Not yeah. the British. Why, why, why I said you don't burn bridges. You get hired back. Mm. Okay, that's why I'm still hoping one day I'll work for IGN. Uh, Ethan is my friend. Only I, if I have one second of doubt about which side you're on, Jeremy Renner, I'm gonna fucking ice your ass. <laughs> Actually, he doesn't even say anything. He just goes, mm. yeah. <laughs> and you get like that's <laughs> yeah. fuck man. I'm Luther dude. Big Reigns might be smart, but he's also a big dude. He might yeah. he's gonna fuck you up. Back in Morocco, we discover um, we start talking about Solomon, and he's an ex-British operative who created the syndicate. And MI6 doesn't want uh, everyone to know. Uh, that their boy went rogue and shit. Ilsa was sent in by MI6 to learn all the identities, all the people he's working with. And guess what? Handily, there's a list of all the operatives, and it's in this skiff. Uh, uh, the ledger. And this dude, this one of his operatives Another went rogue list. on him and decided to compile all this list, put it in this safe place. They tortured him, but he died before they could be getting the access code. But we're going to break into this facility, and this is the one list that's going to take down Solomon. They should have called the knock list, Kevin. They, they do like, later. There's oh, a moment really? where they're oh, like, okay. oh, the knock list. Because even if you just say like, it right oh, now, it makes me feel cool. cool. It, yeah. makes <laughs> feel, it makes me feel cool to hear that. But like, it's the anti knock list. It's like ah, a bad knock so list, cool. you know? Yeah. But I love And then they, and they proceed to tell you just how hard this place is to break into. But it's almost tug in cheek at this point. Yeah. Because they're like, we can't do this. This is ridiculous. There's a dude that's got to be upstairs. There's three locks, retinal scan. Uh, all the shit, full body, but then full but, body gate <laughs> analyzer. But no, before they get to that, they, we get a great scene where Ben's like, "Cool, we'll just I'll just dress up like him." We have another cool scene where they put the mask on. Oh him. my god, yeah. but it's so good because he's like, "I just want to wear a mask." He wants yeah, to wear a mask, mask so right? bad. and then it shows the, like like what it, the mission would look like if he fails and stuff like this. Right. Is just they fun. still like tase him. He's like, "All right, right," because it's got gate analysis. They analyze that they know every single movement that you make facially. But I thought this was really cool. There's and no way to beat this. It's also such a dumb like small detail, but I, I think it's really cool when they show him in the mask. With the skin on the neck still hanging off, and they're like, have like to that, look, that looks so cool. It's really I, I cool. Love that. Uh, there's no way we can get to this terminal. And then Ethan has a bright idea. Wait a minute, where do they keep the profiles for people uh, that that are coming in and out? Because we could hack into that potentially. Uh, and Ilsa's like, I'm way ahead of you, dude. That's why I've got this cool armband that yeah. I really want Kevin to order on Amazon. Here, uh, they don't for exist. Us. And here, <laughs> everybody is the most unrealistic part of this whole franchise. You have gadgets for everything. You don't have a breathing apparatus gadget. Right? You don't have one thing Come that's on. like, hey, well, man, this is a giant plastic thing that holds yeah. three breaths. Do the fucking <laughs> thing that they have in uh, in Phantom Menace. You know, you just put the little, mm. like, the, the mouthpiece in, you know? Yeah. 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 When they go to the, go visit the Gungans. But, but the Gungan City. It gave us a great fucking oh, scene. Were you Black him. Panther there? No, he was Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah, I was Jar Jar. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't, he, he's, you didn't he's just see Jar Jar? Oh, he's there again. Gun Jar Jar. What's but up, yeah, man? like you have gadgets for fucking everything. You've yeah. got to have a breathing apparatus, dude. 
It's, Come on. It's, so okay, so they set up that there's a metal detector in this thing. Uh, but I, I did write that note down. I'm like, is there no such thing as a plastic <clears throat> like air tank? I'm pretty sure there is. But I digress. It doesn't matter because guess what? Benji's like, Tom, you, just be like, Dude, you can hold your breath for two minutes. She's like, well, it's technically going to be three because it takes 30 seconds to upload the fucking profile or whatever, all that shit. So you got to wait over that. He goes, three minutes? That's easy. You got this. Yeah. Benji's <laughs> awesome in yeah. this He's season. so like, great. Right, yeah. Another cool. great. And like, he's like, what, yeah. motherfucker? Like, yeah. I, what the hell? It Slow reminds down, me of, uh, of in Ghost Protocol when Tom Cruise comes off the Khalifa and he's back in the building and Benji walks in yeah. like, oh, that was, that was hard. Yeah. <laughs> he's but like, I got it done. What yeah. what'd I miss? Like, I love that. Like, he's so fucking good. I'm going to just give anyone out there, if you're working for the CIA or the INF organization, a quick note, mm -hmm. okay? If you have to sneak into a place and you're waiting for someone else to upload the profile, maybe let them do that first, mm -hmm. and then you go into the facility. They're always cutting it down I, to the last second here. So I, I was know. thinking about this right now. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, why didn't they do it earlier? But they do open, they like they end up escaping out of that tank. And I'm sure that <laughs> set off a bunch of alarms where it's like, hey, this thing is now spewing water. Lock this bitch down. That's fair. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That checks out. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Benji goes in, uh, has a cool little thing gadget where he can hack the security system and waits for them to skydive in and get in place and then hacks it and gets in. Uh, this guy I'm so quick. It's, it's cool. awesome. Right. They, they, shoot, they, they just, shoot the camera. They fly in, just fucking land on the thing. I'm just like, I love that in other movies, this would be a huge scene of yeah. them. Nah. Yeah. No. Just and they, yeah, they do the they do the cool thing again. Another yeah, throwback the where they camera. shoot the camera and yeah. it like hacks into the thing real quick and just like loops the feed. But it just cool. disables it. Like the camera just turned off. Is that what it did? Yeah. What? I'm sorry. I just, future spoilers. Don't worry about it. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, we oh, then. <laughs> They break in, they do the little cool thing that Kevin loves, which is like the, the sonic vibration, breaks the glass, they come so in. So cool. Yeah. I'm definitely showing off rails at this point. Yeah. Definitely it showing It just becomes off. dust. It's, it's just, so pff, cool. It's like a breakaway glass in a like car. It feels yeah. like the worst way to handle that. Like at least with the other thing, like they cut the glass, I feel like they you could, could just kind of put yeah. it back put a plate, on top. Yeah. 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 But, but like this is just like, oh, it's just shattered. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to kind of like vacuum it or something, yeah. no, which would have been cool, but no. Just shattered glass. I don't understand why you need a giant underground facility where you store car <laughs> like cards that you is are just impossible to get in and out at a moment's notice all of which can be stored on a thumb drive but we don't give a shit because we this don't is give liquid a shit. cool Nick, and it's cool it's more secure it's I definitely you more secure I mean? it's not physically you know possible really, for somebody really to do secure? that just like a room with a lock on it and like two dudes outside with guns that's probably easier cuz you figure there's got to be some tech that's like it, this, like remember when we used to work at IGN and Chris Ostrich would always have to go back into the server room and like get shocked by things. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing that underwater. Yeah. And you can't have any metal. Doesn't sound good. I will say that there's about 10 minutes here that are what I think the least good part of this movie. This The underwater scene didn't look great. I love the tension. I love the heartbeat. The there climax, was a lot of cool man, stuff. The climax of that scene is fucking dope. And him dope. seemingly dying. Yeah, that, there was that's cool what I'm things. About, yeah. But then I, I feel like this kind of slows the movie down and that's a testament to how fast this movie goes mm. well mm. so either way we have a great scene where they look over and there's a sarlacc pit of water in front of him and he goes ready great cool but she goes the current's gonna just suck you right in so you're gonna get there fast don't worry about swimming but once you're in you gotta get the fuck out right yeah uh he goes cool does the thing where he tucks and just <sighs> so dives cool. in it's terrifying just yeah. so just gets immediately sucked in gets goes through the hatch <coughs> benji starts going through the security measures using his phone to hack each one of the um the <coughs> excuse me the locks Tom gets into the thing, finds the, the the place where the card's being held with a profile on it, opens it up, takes the card out, dodges an arm once, takes his card out, which looks exactly the same. At this point, I would also be like this. Another mental note for different anyone chance. out there. Yeah. Uh, different color or just put a Sharpie mark on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, something that's like, you know, I post it no. Yeah, like yeah. I get Tom Cruise that you from the first one where you're like, I know which one I got. I, I know which knock list I have because you, you win the thing. Which one Magic is tricks. it? Magic sleight of hand, David Mindtel, Mind Freak, right? Uh, but just a mental note for later. Put a little mark on it that says mm -hmm. IMF or something. But then they'd be able to <laughs> trace it once they figure it all well, out. Well, who cares? We, we're but already also, just make it red. Just make it red. Exactly. You know? It doesn't have to match the yellow. They already know you broke in, so some shit's up. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, Benji's up there. Thing gets not, the, the arm comes back and just knocks him, his, him on his ass. We get the two, cards. the two cards floating away. We don't know which one is which. Tom's going around. The, the, all, meanwhile, by the way, the security guys downstairs have figured out that this fucking water's off and shit's going to overheat. So they turn the water back on. The, the cyclonic current starts, and Tom's like, shit, I got to figure this out. Grabs both discs, gets back to the thing, can't figure out which one disc is what, and then proving Alec Baldwin right, just 100%. says, fuck it, 50-50 shot. Who knows? Throws one away, sticks the other one in, right as Benji goes through the gate, and, and guess what? It's the right one. Yeah. We're starting to think that maybe 
Alec Baldwin had a, his case was saw it making here. a little bit of sense. Making a little bit a of sense. A lot of here. luck. I I don't think he threw it away. I think it got like backed out of his hand. And he was just like, I, I guess say this that is it's it. like, all right, I can hold my breath for two minutes, but can you hold it for three minutes? I don't know. We'll have to see. Wait. Oh, I just got fucking hit by surprise by this giant metal thing. Right. And he's a way, goddamn woo! professional. So he puts it in there, starts getting out, but then starts realizing he doesn't have enough strength <laughs> left in his oxygen depleted thing. body to, to take this hatch out. Ilsa's freaking out upstairs because she realizes we're way over time here. Uh, Benji's in. He's super excited. He has no idea what the fuck's going on. But then Tom Cruise starts <laughs> to pass out. Excited. And you think he's going to muster like... Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll f- I'm Tom Cruise, dude. I've done this before. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. I can climb up this fucking mountain. It's fine. No, he passes the fuck out and dies. Movie's over. What do we think? Sound right. design <laughs> is perfect and great. Yeah, the heartbeat. Scene. Yeah, yeah. I um, I as somebody who cannot swim, it, drowning scenes have Wait, always terrified me. Yeah, I can't swim. Kevin can teach you. He swims like a dolphin. That's true. I never learned how because every time I, my parents take me to a pool, I always get sick. So they just stopped taking me what to like pools sick? and stuff. Like, like I'd get like infection and like the chlorine and like getting out of water. Uh, sick, I had bad allergies. Fucking ropes, man. I'm learning a lot about <laughs> yeah, you today. You're a beautiful, beautiful. So anything soul. drowning wise always terrified me, especially the underwater, uh, the underwater level in Ninja Turtles on NES. Oh, I hate that. That mm. is that's the, is the that's kind of what started it for me. So this brought back a lot of like trauma for me. Mm. This scene mm. was like so fucking incredible and had me like. Even last night, just like on the edge of my bed, I know he fucking survives, but it's still just like, oh, they're doing such a great job building this tension. And he Phenomenal, dies. dude. <laughs> so and he died, yeah. It's just so crazy that like, some people in the chat being like, oh, you can't pressurize oxygen, which is like, all right, in, in a plastic uh, oh. container. Science, science, science with Kev. I'm Kevin. <laughs> and it's like, I've got one of those uh, <laughs> CO2, you know, like, the ones that make uh, sodas, uh, soda stream. Yeah. Soda stream. And it's like, you pressurize CO2 <clears throat> in there. I'm, I don't need it to have a lot of thing. One breath would have doubled the amount of time that he could be Literally. in here, you know? Six minutes, yeah. Yeah. Just like one. And like, that would have been fine. <laughs> Why didn't he just bring one of these soda stream <laughs> containers with a little mouthpiece on it that he could be like, yeah. oh, thank God I, I brought two, I, you know, two breaths. Yeah. yeah. Very solid call. It uh, doesn't matter. He's fucking dead as a door now. He's floating out there. Nope, he's not. Boom. Who comes to save the day? Little Ilsa. Fishy herself. Ilsa just said, fuck it. I'm going to go. I'm going to find this. Uh, grabs him. Uh, gets like gets on him like a skydiver, which is cool. I thought she like wraps her legs around mm-hmm. him, which is awesome. Looks fantastic. Uh, and then starts trying to swim toward the thing, but then realizes there's no way she's going to get there. Rides the cyclone out, and as she rides it, realizes she's going to thank God it's going in the right direction. <coughs> uh, I guess it doesn't matter. <coughs> Sorry, I apologize, audio listeners. I've got a little bit of a cough. Um, uses the cyclonic energy to grab onto the cyclonic hatch energy, and yeah. pull it. And yeah, boom, dude. gets shot out. Right. So Meanwhile, cool. Ethan's been dead for a solid three yeah. minutes. We get a shot. But where will he survive? We'll have to know. find out in one second. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this episode of Kind of Funny in Reviews brought to you by Me Undies. You probably spend about ninety percent of your life in underwear, so don't you think you owe it to yourself to make sure you're wearing the softest undies in town? I do think so, Tim. I think so as well. I'm wearing just solid gray right now. Um, Kevin, God, that you're, you're aggressively pulling those Let's things see. out. Sushi. Sushi. We're in the fall. Kevin, I'm sushi. Sushi. the pole and see what happens. Oh my Stop. God! I wore my yeah, avocados. Yeah, yeah. I wore my so avocados. So many fun prints. I love the unicorns. Andy loves the avocados. Uh, men can now try the new boxer brief with fly <laughs> if that is what you're into. Uh, Meundies is also the go-to for the softest loungewear on the planet. Hang out in their super comfy lounge pants and onesies. Yes, Meundies makes onesies. You didn't think it was possible, but it is to have that softness all over your body and blazing across your body. They're incredible. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you order MeUndies, you get 15% off and free shipping. This is a no-brainer. Get 15% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on with free shipping, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash morning. Does he survive, Nick? Ladies and gentlemen, he does survive with the help of a brand new defibrillator. And thank God it's not the defibrillator from Mission Impossible 3 that took 45 fucking minutes to spool up. Where did the defibrillator come from? They just, I, you presume they were like. Did she bring it? You presume they were yeah. like, yeah, it's probably going to drown. Call. We're going to have to bring it so back. So it's a waterproof one because it didn't get ruined when she was in the water. No, no, no. They had it all set up. And oh, like you the, think so? I feel like they had a little base because Benji knew that was like yeah, where they were going to yeah, come yeah. back. That to was their, sure. rec- their no. recon, uh, reconnaissance. She shocks him and he comes back to no. life. And then Benji comes in all cocky. Cocky as fuck. And it's just like, 
I got it, everyone. That it's was right a lot here. easier. That it's was right And then has a very real moment where he looks and realizes, oh shit, Ethan almost died. Yeah. Uh, comes to his aid and is like, hey man, we got it. We did like, it, buddy. We did it. And then poof, gets shocked. Ilsa, well, before, actually before that, she does, she does like really sexy thing where she turns around and like takes her top off. And I was like, what do you do for back? Dude, that's I don't what I want to know. know. What do you do for back? And also, like, what's like, your back workout? That shirt take off was aggressive. Like, that's the only way you can put it. Let me tell you what I think. I've been in Morocco, the Moroccan sun makes you tan. You want to show that shit off. I totally understand it. But like, you got to think that's the moment where she's like, I'm going to fuck these guys over. I'm yeah. about to screw it. Like, I, you know, like she's getting in serious mode. Yeah. yeah. It was serious. It was good. Very well played. <clears throat> she shocks uh, Benji and uh, is like, sorry, yanks the thumb drive and has to get away. Bangs out, goes upstairs. Uh, some for some reason is gonna take the BMW, and then realizes that her biker boys are there, and then goes, oh, "Okay, I guess I'll just get on the motorcycle." No, instead. the BMW rejects her hand. Oh, rejects. Yeah, the she hand. put her yeah. hand in. Like, doo, doo, doo. well, thank God they brought her a full <laughs> suit of leathers uh, for the awesome bike scene that's about to happen because she gets up. Tom Cruise, of course, dressed in like the most hideous Touristy. Euro fucking snakeskin uh, uh, shirt the entire time, which I thought was great. I nice loved little it. touch. Uh, gets up and is like, "We got to go after her." I'm driving. And he's like, don't you think you were just dead like one minute walk. ago? <laughs> he's stumbling. And then he goes, he does this great thing where he goes to shoot himself. He like goes to like throw himself across the hood of the car and just stops halfway and falls off. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, he's not in a good place yeah, no. right now. But of course, the, it doesn't reject his handprint. They get in the BMW again. Shout out to BMW for uh, and Halo 5 for bringing you this episode. A couple things. Yeah, you're right. So they did actually sponsor both Halo and BMW. Um, the good guys all drive BMWs. The bad guys don't. Oh. I mean, that would be if I was like, hey, my car is going to be in this. You better goddamn believe that Tom Cruise is going to drive that car and not the bad guy. It's like in The Getaway, all the ba- uh, the video game The Getaway, remember mm-hmm. that? All the bad guys drove Lexuses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Really cool. Um, the, the, the last thing there is that we all know that Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Cool. Yeah. That's not fascinating anymore, right? Except it's still fucking yeah. it's still awesome. Um, but Simon Pegg does all his own driving. Does he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's man. cool. I'd want to, too, because I'd be like, that's cool. I, I wonder if drive. he was ever on yeah. an episode of Top Gear. Probably. You know how the celebrities go in and like test and I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I would be. Great show. Uh, I bet for, you that's because of uh, what's his face? Tom Cruise being like Tom Cruise about everything. Don't be a bitch, dude. Yeah, yeah just, just do get it yourself. the fucking car. Yeah. Dude, dude, I'm driving, you've driving. driven a car before. <laughs> it's the same thing, except you might die. Uh, Ilsa gets on her bike and then realizes she's got to get away from these guys. So she pulls a fucking juke move and like spins around and knocks all their bikes down and then takes off, right? Meanwhile, Tom Cruise. And it just has an inherent knowledge of wherever she's at. Takes off after her. Who does he run into? Boom. Great it's Brant and Luther. And they have a great scene where they kind of just look at each other. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Dude, uh, but that motorcycle <laughs> bit, that motorcycle combat that they just fucking did where she, like, tail whips them all. That one scene was better than the entire 20-minute motorcycle oh battle we had. In so, far, <laughs> so, so far better. And then we get the scene, like, moments later where Tom Cruise does it with a fucking car. Yeah. Oh, where dude. he twists yeah. in the middle of the street, just takes two guys out. Dude, so much like, in a, in a perfectly yeah. little alley. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God, yeah. it's cool. That's and then, really fucking cool, yeah. I do want to bring attention to the Luther and... Um, uh, what's the other guy's Brant. name? Brant. Brant. Hot Little hot. moment where he's like, why did we have to, you wanted you to the, the all terrain. Yeah. You had to get the 4 by 4 <laughs> Just try. Oh, like, the just the try. back okay. and forth of their relationship yeah. being built is like, I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And that's what I was saying I was missing in the other movies. I feel like every, all the characters have dynamics that are fun. You want to hear them talk and they're always talking. Well, you're also getting, of course, the fact that these people have done like so many movies together and they have a chemistry now probably offset as well as onset that's now translating, which is very, very good. Thank but God. also Jimmy Renner just has a great comedic set, timing in this and nails this character because he's not the bravado like superhero character in this. He is kind of like the analyst, nerdy, undersecretary guy. <laughs> he's he's, he's the like the I don't know guys yeah. Yeah. guy. He's the one that's always asking the questions. Uh, then we get uh, of course the scene where Tom Cruise is getting shot at. They shoot everything in the fucking car but the passenger and driver's seat and he does a he spins a little juke move goes down the alleyway and just sandwiches these two motorcycles with a with like a slide spin move into the sides of the walls uh, and then of course is backward and at about 100 miles an hour, which I don't know what BMWs must be great for going backward because mm-hmm. at 100 miles an hour shot puts him and Benji Backward, so they three miles. Up. Yeah. yeah, and thank God for uh, uh, the airbags. little trick that he learned yeah. in you, the last movie. Yeah, exactly. You, you wearing your seatbelt? You're just asking me now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, shot puts himself. They land. The car tumbles. What I feel is an obnoxious amount. S- Absurd, dude. It's a, absurd. Uh, when you say car tumbles, in my head I see like a it car kind of like this. It cartwheels <laughs> <laughs> multiple fucking yeah, I mean, times. Let's put it this way. It flips. Yeah. When it's done, it does the. 
the Olympic thing, gold medal. Let's put it that way, gold medal. Uh, it ben, did look like a gymnast. Uh, oh my god, it was that was like the. Uh, uh, come on, Chris. What like you know he was like no, it's got to be a lot of tumbles. Yeah, and they're like that's not that's not physically possible for a car to do this. He's like. Mission Impossible. Yeah. Mission it's Impossible. Possible. Uh, the car is flipped up, upside down. Tom Cruise wakes up. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Tom Cruise wakes up and sees a motorcycle pull up. And the guy gets off, takes a gun out, and is about to kill him. And then, boom, the 4x4 four four fucking yeah. takes him out. <laughs> yeah, it does. This is great. That was great. a violent scene. Very violent. But, like, also, I was like, yeah, our boys are, like, yeah. oh, they're all yeah. together again. Uh, uh, Brant leans down. He's like, you doing okay? And then Benji wakes up. He's like, oh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really, really funny. Uh <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, uh, Tom Cruise looks over, like gets out of the car, looks over, and he sees Ilsa taking off on a bike. And you think the scene's over? You think no. she's gotten away? No, it's not, because like they turn, they literally go to cut Benji out. They turn around, he's already on the other guy's motorcycle, has taken off. And this is really, really cool. First off, for a couple of reasons. One, I've actually been on this road before. When I went to Morocco, I believe this. I might be wrong. Chat or comments, let me know. But they said they were in Casablanca, but I think this road's outside of Marrakesh by a few, by like maybe 20 miles, leading up into the Mid Atlas Mountains. Did you go down those stairs? Uh, no, the stairs I think were actually in Casablanca, but I think the next scene where they start doing the windy roads are in the, the Atlas Mountains. Uh, because I believe I took a car trip up there when I went, and they That's were like, cool. hey, this is where they shot Mission Impossible. And why would he lie to me? Probably because he knows I was never going to see him again. Are you traveling but with Johnny Ace over there? Uh, no. Well, maybe. Yeah. I mean, at that time, I didn't know. know. Maybe. I don't right. know. My brain's <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah. My brain's dead and the joke's over. Uh, it's a cool scene where all sorts of people get taken out. Uh, and we get, of course, the culmination, the climax of the scene where he fucks the dude up and then just revs it up super hard to catch up to Ilsa. And then as he rounds the corner, she's standing in the middle of the road. Bold Fucking move. Hey. Bold maneuver like she's a boss. She's smart, though, you know? It's proving once again that she is every bit Ethan's equal, mm -hmm. if not slightly better than him, because he winds up on his fucking ass and his motorcycle is Violet. destroyed. That fucking tumble looked yeah, like it, was, it was very real. Uh, what does she do? Of course, she looks at him and is like, mm, sorry, dude. Gets back on her bike and just takes off. Then we go to London, England. And this was the point that I had to walk away and I looked. I'm like, there's still 40 minutes and I can't fucking wait. Hell, a lot of movie yeah. left in this. Uh, she meets up with her chief, her boss, Chief Atley. I'm Chief Atley. Uh, to give him. him the disc and says, look, dude, I'm out. This is it. I gave you the fucking thumb drive. I'm out. And he goes, but we don't know what's on here and we can't authenticate it because we don't, we don't know what it is, right? Uh, you got to go back in there and you got to give it back to him and have him authenticate it and then we'll come and take him out. And she's like, dude, I've done everything you fucking asked, bro. And he's like, Look at you're either going to go back in there and, and authenticate this disc or, or this drive or I'm going to let the CIA know who you really are and they're just going to come kill you because they're in the killing mood right now. And she's like, wow, you're a dick. And he's like, well, this is the game. Don't hate the fucking player. Hate the game. And she's like, but the CIA is our friends. And he goes, there are no friends in this game. Just people with common interests. Mm -hmm. Right. Get up. Go do your fucking job. Right. And she's like, great. Grabs the thumb drive. Takes off again. Has to go back and eat some fucking crow. Dude, that moment. He's like. There are very few people that know who you really are. Yeah. And it would suck if they forgot. Yeah. It was just like, fuck, what a good job building her motivation on like, why is she like committing to this thing? Why is she ready to kill someone? But I also love it because th what you just said right there is mirrored mm -hmm. in why Solomon Lang hates these Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Oh, such a well crafted getting, story. Just getting used and abused by the system mm -hmm. and fucking can't stand it. And that's why he wants to take the system down. So it actually goes into back yeah. up a little bit of why the antagonist is doing what he does. I thought it was a nice touch because you start to hate the authorities, the powers that be in the CIA and the MI6 as well by about midway through this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, we're back with the boys right now. And guess what? They can't open the drive. It's a red box, which yeah. I thought was a DVD delivery service that you go into the stores and get like you just rent fucking uh, Marley good deals. and me. Good deals. Great on deals. Yeah. I've never used it myself, though. Really? Is it good? Yeah, it's great. Oh, great. It works out nice. Uh, this thing is triple encrypted. Why? <clears throat> this is where I for, I didn't I wasn't paying that close attention. Is this all they had in in the in the drive store or like the drive area where Benji was like grabbing? Like, why didn't he bring his own thumb drive to copy this information? No, 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 no. How, yeah, why it would, must have been, and they must have had several. To, I to guess pick they up. they would have figured out if he had a drive bringing in there. But how did yeah. he know they were going to have this red box? I would think that he just copied a file over, being like, "Oh, this, this these it? are the Got files." It. Yeah, and the file itself is encrypted, not the thumbstick. The, the thumbstick has a has scanner. a fingerprint thing. Which, but, by the way, Kevin, I made a note. Let's get some th fingerprint scan with thumb drives. <laughs> yeah. I'm really liking this bit. Get one I, either way, I hope you get commit one to it. Like a oh, it's bottle. committed. I have it yeah. five more it's times. Committed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this thing is triple encrypted, man. It's got a fingerprint, a retinal scan, and a voice phrase that can only be 
uh, spoken by a specific individual, and somehow they know that individual is none other than the Prime Minister mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> we have no idea what's on this drive, man. Uh, we got to figure it out. Uh, and Ethan's like, look, if if Lang wants this thing open, he's going to... He's going to find a way to take it open, which means he's probably going for the prime minister. And, and then Jeremy Renner's like, no, dude. I, I see where you're going, bro. <laughs> and we're not doing this. And he's like, there's no other way. We got to go take the prime minister. The classic Ethan Hawkeye yeah. conundrum. And and now Brant's like, dude, you're fucking like. And they have this great back and forth with Luther where Ethan's like, I don't see any other way. And he's like, but you're fucking crazy. Right. And then Luther backs him up, comes. He's like, Ethan's always the one that on, like he's the only one that sees the truth about this. And he's like, are you the only one or are you just fucking delusional right now? Like we broke a lot of laws. My career is on the line. Alec Baldwin's awesome to hang out with. You guys should come meet him. <laughs> but he's also coming to kill you. And they're like, we got to do this. And then Sweaty we get a scene in right afterward where Brant <laughs> maybe or maybe not. Uh, fucking narcs narcs on him. Yeah. Just straight up narcs and is like, you got to come to London, England right now. Uh, they're gonna do some shit, but I want your word that you're not gonna kill Ethan. And Hunley's like, no, I'm just not giving you my word. Like straight up, not gonna happen. That's up to him. That's up to That's him. That's up to him, right? Yeah. But I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna kill him. Uh, yeah, but Brad's like, you know, we do this on my terms. And he's like, dude, the syndicate's made up. He's crazy. We might have to put him down. <clears throat> uh, meanwhile, uh, 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 let's see. Oh yeah, right. Il- Ilsa meets up with Lang back in the cemetery. Uh, she hands over the red box, uh, which. Right, 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 right. All is forgiven, not really. Uh, but guess what? This isn't a ledger, is it? And he's like, "No, it's not actually a ledger. Uh, there's something else on the on this list that I just wanted you if guys to steal." If he knew what it was, me. I wouldn't. You wouldn't have gotten it, right? It's like, oh shit, which is like crazy, right? Yeah. Like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, and then they have a little back and forth where he's like, "Listen, I got to be honest with you. Like, I kind of fucking know that you're a double agent here, but, but I'm I, still trying to win you over. But I kind of want to win you over yeah. because I want you to see because like, now you're seeing it how fucked up yeah. the system you is. Maybe of, just, you have a lot of." You nail it now. Glee. Now you got wow. it. That you was a little Marlon Brando. You were putting a little, little bit too much S on it my before. Son. My son. My son. Oh my god. Oh my you god. Have a lot of potential, Ethan. There it is. It's That's great. Good. That's uh, good. And he's yeah, like, there we listen. go. We got there, dude. Thanks. Nice. He's like, join me and and uh, fucking feel realize the full power of the dark side. And she's mm-hmm. like, you're a terrorist, motherfucker. You kill a lot of people. But he's starting to make sense. And he's sense. like, listen, man. Everyone kills a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Just be cool. Solid point. Solid point, right? And she's like, that's cool. They run the disc, of course, and it's empty. Right, <sighs> not a good thing. Bad for Ilsa. Yeah, uh, who are you gonna blame for this one? Yeah, it's like, oh. and he's like, who are you gonna blame next for this one? Uh, meanwhile, I guess Ethan. Oh, that's right. Next up, uh, uh, Ethan tracks her down to a train station. They have a great. Uh, the team's all there. She's looking around. She's like, I can't get out of here. But she's like, the disc is empty. And Ethan's like, uh, it wasn't empty when we gave it to you. But Benji's like, that's bullshit. I copied there. I have. Like I copied this copy thing on the disc. Easy copy stuff. Yeah, this was yours. Like when we believe Benji because he has never lied to anyone. In this movie, no. uh, and she, and then he go, Ethan goes, "Did you let the disc out of your sight? Were you the only person that handled it?" And she realizes, "Oh, Atlee fucked me." And we get <laughs> a put it on a newspaper. <laughs> we get a little flashback where Atlee like takes his phone out and it's like deleted all the stuff on there. And you're like, "Why would he want to delete that? That's weird." That's good. Maybe it's like, Chief well, Atlee isn't being 100 percent honest. Also, with us. who created this really like pretty UI for this deletion program? It's really, it cool. Cool. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. All yeah. the UI in this movie is great. Yeah, great. everything is so well yeah. done. Like this is the future I want. Yeah, you put a fucking th- and that makes sense. NFC, you know, like little yeah, things going sure. in there, sending a command. Uh, but I like this back and forth. They sit down on the train station. Ethan's like, "Look it, let's cut to the chase." I know you're just doing your job. I know you're disavowed i know all this stuff uh and she's like you knew the disc was blank and and uh no he's like we didn't that we get the whole flashback conversation uh and then uh someone brings up the point he's like wait if the disc was blank why is she alive and why are we still talking to her like are we in fucking danger right now and they fucking look uh, around benji's just gone but she's basically like she's like you got Whoa, three benji. She's a puff of smoke <laughs> yeah she's like you got three choices you can hand me over to the cia and i'm proof of everything but they won't believe you and they're gonna burn you guys alive anyway for treason mm-hmm. two you can use this disc as bait to find uh and capture lang which is probably what we're gonna do mm-hmm. uh but some part of me suspects you've met your match man you gone dick to dick measuring contest, and guess what? He's a solid five and a half, five and three quarters, just like you on a good day. It's warm okay. outside, measuring in. You guys are equal. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Close You'll probably six. end up just playing right into his fucking plan anyway, and handing mm-hmm. him the goddamn thing. Which, by the way, keep that in mind, because that's the thing that Bell goes off. He's like, maybe that's the way we're gonna get him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and three, or guess what? Come away with me right now. Fuck all this shit. There's always going to be another line. What an enticing Dude, yeah. Right? Like, fuck right. this. Like, hey, she's right. Go. Let's go. He looks over at, uh, at Luther's like. Luther's like, damn. Well, Luther, Luther, Luther like, can hear everything, yeah. right? Because he is like, damn, that's a great choice. Yeah. <laughs> like, either you better do it, man. <laughs> uh, 
Very, very much. And then all of a sudden, uh, Lane sent her a message, and when she opens it up, it cripples their earpieces, and it's <sighs> just the amount of time they need to snatch Benji. They look over, he's gone. They go after him, and then he's like, uh, hey, Luther, you gotta watch uh, You gotta watch out for Ilsa. I he got looks, you, dog. He's like, I got it, man. It looks over, and she's just fucking- oh, Don't got it, dog. Street magic disappears. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> just mind freak. Yeah. Dude, but he also like tries to run after her, and he is just like, everyone is like, hey, let's not move out of the way of this giant running man. Yeah, that's and he's crazy. just like, oh, uh, uh, Wade. Uh, they Jason. go down. They Jason. go down into the into the, the thing. They've lost Benji. Everything's fucking lost. Brant's pissed, right? And this is not going the way we want it to go. Uh, Elaine calls Ethan and says, "Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to unlock this fucking disc by midnight tonight, or I'm gonna murk your friend." And Ethan accepts. Says, "We got guess what, guys? We got to steal the prime mm-hmm. minister. Mm-hmm. We just got to do this." So mm-hmm. fucking cool. Yeah, he's now working for the bad guy. Yeah. The bad guy. He has no choice. Uh huh. Wow. And there it is. It came full circle. Uh, that is it. That's how. That's how. And then, but he figures it out. He's like, wait a minute. We don't know what his plan is yet. But he, he has an aha moment. Where he's mm-hmm. like, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is how we beat him. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, and this is the scene where Brant's like, you've gone fucking crazy, dude. Like we can't do this shit. But he's like, no, 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 no. This is. There's no other way. We got him. And you have, you have one brief moment having seen this movie already, where this is the moment where he realizes the chess pieces, like the how the rest mm-hmm. of this game's gonna play out. And he figures out how to beat him. And yeah. He's like, all you have to do is steal the drive, and I've got him beaten. Which is great. Uh, we're gonna beat him. We're gonna we're gonna steal the prime minister. Get the get the thing back, and we're gonna get Benji back, and everything's gonna be great. We're gonna we're gonna put fucking Lane in a box. It's gonna be great. Um, uh, yada yada yada. Uh, Simon Pegg. We we catch up with him. He's tied to a chair, and Lane's like, and, and the bone collector's there, and then Lane's like, good and ready. Did well, I do get it? Get him ready. Yeah, get him ready. Get him ready. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> Uh, Huntley, meanwhile, shows up in London, England, and meets up with Brant. Uh, what's he planning to do? And he's like, "Listen, I got—I need your assurances that you're going to take him alive, man." And he's like, oh, "We'll fucking see, dude. Nobody tells Alec Baldwin what's up. I'm the head of Thirty Rock. It's like good point." Mm-hmm. Uh, God. <coughs> Alec Baldwin is such a good choice. Great, great there. in The Departed yeah. too. Uh, so yeah. good, yeah. very good. Huntley. Great, great. He and Mark Wahlberg, great comic relief in that movie. Yeah, uh, but it Hunley was. Movie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Huntley meets up meanwhile with this swarmy fuck Chief Atley and tells him all about what's going to happen. Fuck. And he's like, "Dude, the prime hunt is uh, going to steal the prime minister. We got to get to him right now." They go in, they grab the prime minister out of his little auction. What's going on? So we got to talk to you right now. Walk in the room. Huntley uh, Atley goes, "Don't let anyone else in this fucking room." Walks in, and we get this great scene where. Uh, they're downloading the the the, the they're telling the stitch to the prime minister. They said, uh, "Listen, uh, they're in the possession of this red box that can only be opened by you." Hunt has been hunting on the syndicate. The prime minister uh, fucking looks over at Atley and just is like, "Motherfucker!" I said hands no him his to the syndicate. Ass. I thought you said this was only an exercise. And Brant's like, "Does the Sol- the, ma- the name Solomon Lang ring a bell to you?" And the prime minister's like, "Boy, does it, sir? I've never person I've ever met to an organization. I don't. I shouldn't be telling you this because you are a foreign organization they're that's friends. not ours." It's true, but maybe yeah. I should. But maybe the prime minister is like a little forthcoming here. Basically, is like, listen, this wasn't uh, this was an exercise. Had a few cocktails, you know. Yeah, yeah. Had a couple, well, yeah. maybe a little, a little chatty Cathy. Right you know? Well, he was also like, this guy just fucked up. Like they went with this plan that I was like, no go. This is yeah. not a safe plan. It's not uh, a good plan. The syndicate was a hypothetical brainchild of Atley. The idea was to recruit former agents from other nations and supply them with new identities, then have them surgically remove enemies, both foreign and domestic. Uh, the Such op- a Metal Gear Solid moment. Very, very cool. yeah. All of this, mm-hmm. uh, of course, so the great. operation budget uh, was kept on this the secure red disc and the secure server. So if he ever wanted to tap into it. It was at his disposal, and the PM said, I just patently reject this. This would make me judge, jury, and executioner. No one man should have all this power, uh, which is completely ridiculous because he probably would have done it. Uh, but either way, the, the the PM tries to leave, but Huntley stops him. And he's like, dude, I urge you to stay in this room. Ethan is coming. And then he has the, the coolest best line. fucking so line fucking awesome. in the whole movie where he goes, there is no secret he cannot extract, no security he cannot breach, and no person he cannot become he has most likely anticipated this very conversation he is the living manifestation <laughs> of destiny. destiny and he has made you his mission yeah and if it was anyone else but alec baldwin saying this i'd be like that is the dumbest fucking line ever written. but he <laughs> fucking nailed it do you think ethan like we get the reveal in two seconds that he's there yeah do you think he was sitting there being like that's pretty cool yeah. and this I'm guy gets it uh, of course this guy turns right around and atley's got a train gun yeah. and he tranks the pm and guess what tears off the mask it's not atley at all it's ethan the whole time tim did you see this coming no dude it's <laughs> so great when jeremy renner called fucking alec baldwin i was like jeremy 
Dude, don't, don't be a narc. I was like, I be can't. Why are you being a narc? Like, like, I was. I got so played by this movie. It was beautiful, man. It's yeah. a beautiful symphony <laughs> yeah. just playing me. I'm just like, all right, what's what's Hawkeye up to? Like, what's the plan? What are they doing? Why would he do this? And when he pulls that mask off, I was like, "You motherfucker! How did I not see this coming? <laughs> yeah. I'm flabbergasted! Oh my god! Like I, I had to pause. I, I needed a moment. Yeah, beautiful uh, yeah. fucking yeah. art. I love. We get a couple of great lines here where they shoot him with his like with true serum that kind of wax him out a little bit. Yeah. And the, as they sit the PM down, he's like, "At least shot me." And Brant's like, "Yep, he shot you. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Put that in your For DT sure, with your Allie was the dude. This guy's the guy that fucked you." <laughs> and then uh, uh, Huntley looks at her, Alec Baldwin looks over me. He goes, "Hunt, I hope you know what you're doing because you just sat." Set back U.S. UK relations to the American yeah. Revolution. <laughs> so great! I love like, that you just line. fucked us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but like, what a brilliant move to be like. All right, we're gonna get the prime minister to talk about syndicate right. in front of this dude who doesn't trust us at all. Right. So uh, good. And then of course, Hunley now realizes that syndicate's a real thing and all this stuff's real, and uh, he's on the side, man. We get a nice little look where he's like. Good job, Ethan. Good job. Well played. Destiny. Uh, they get the retinal scan. They get the fingerprint scan. They ask him. They say the, the passcode is uh, uh, Kipling. And then, of course, the PM knows what that is and goes, oh, I'll give you this quote because I'm whacked out on fucking wacky yeah. juice right now. So uh, it says the quote. It unlocks the thing. And it's not what they thought. It, was. it is this budget. It's got all these accounts uh, in it. And we've got it. And, of course, Atley, the real Atley shows up by this point, storms into the room with two security guards, and they just trank the fuck out of those guys. Trank yeah. Atley. And then Atley starts just copping to everything because this wacky juice is fantastic. Shout out to the moment where uh, when Ethan was pretending to be Atley and he was like, "No, one, don't let anybody come into this room." Yeah. And then Atley comes and they're like, "We were told not to let anybody in this room." He's like, "By who?" And then it's like, so, "By you, by you <laughs> sir." Yeah. That's a great moment. A classic kind of moment, but yeah. still so well done. Uh, that's fantastic. Of course, <laughs> uh, Hunley's like, "I don't know what the fuck's going on." And he goes, "Yeah, you do. Here's what happened." You figured out that Atlee was bad. You brought this train gun in, hands in the gun, and he's like, uh, "You saved the day, dude." Like, how this? Here's how this story is gonna go. Mm -hmm. You figured out that uh, this guy was gonna assassinate the, the Chief Huntley was gonna assassinate the Prime Minister. You saved the day. Here you go. And Alec Baldwin goes, "I just got a promotion thanks to you. <laughs> we're homies now. Yep. Now we're homies. Okay. You fucking you earned your trust. I'm not hunting you down anymore. You got it." Um, then we cut over to Luther's building something cool with a screw gun. Uh, and then I, I wrote this note. Is Kevin our Luther? I think you are, Kev. Uh, <laughs> Luther proves once again he's the moral center of the group and is like, listen, there's a 2.4 billion pounds sterling budget in this disc. We can't let it out. And Ethan's like, don't worry, dog. I got a plan. You don't know what that plan is, but you try. Everyone trusts each other, which is really Doesn't, nice. Then there's a cut and he's drilling through it. Right? Yeah. No, he puts the disc in first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Watches the video, which is at Chief Atley, which he's like, hey, if you want to use this, this is what it is. You're choosing to activate. Scans through all of the, the things. Banks. The and banks. Everything. And then boom, pull <clears throat> right in the disc. Like, fuck you. You're not getting this. I'm the disc now. Mm. Right? Genius. He actually idea. says that, though. Yeah. Does he? Yep. Yeah. He yeah, says, yeah, yeah. I'm he's the sitting disc. In, the, in the table. Yeah. Uh, goes but it's up, brilliant. Yeah. Goes up to the meet. Uh, of course, Benji. This is a creepy ass scene where Benji's strapped. There's a bomb. Ilse is there and Benji starts talking but it's not his words he's got the retina thing in his eyes and he's got an earpiece and he's basically just saying what he's just a mouthpiece for Lang at this point again Dude, can this movie get better really cool this fucking scene the acting in this scene like I didn't know what Simon Pegg could like nail this but like he's sitting there crying yeah, yeah. like he's about uh. to die Another moment where you're like, the, all is lost. Yeah. Like, they, it's over. They're right. about to kill Benji. They lost. And this is this is a great scene, right? It sits, Elsa's there, and she's like, listen, <clears throat> there's two ways this can go. You're going to give us, <coughs> you're going to give us the disc, and I'm going to kill you and Benji, or this bomb's going to go off with ball bearings in it that we stole from Swordfish, and we're going to kill everyone. Those are the only two ways. And Tom Cruise goes, nope, there's a third way. Here's, here's an account. I'll give you $50 million if you let Benji go. And he writes down an account number on a very nice napkin, which if I were the major to do this restaurant, I'd be like, stop writing on my napkins. What are you doing? Uh, holds it up to Benji. And then Solomon Lang's like, what's he playing at? Types in the account number. True. Uh, oh, shit. Million dollars. That's an account that has $50 million in it. Transfers Where's the it. disc? I'm the disc, motherfucker. You want to blow me up? And there you go. And then they, there's, then it's a game of just a game of bluffs. And he's like, I know what you're thinking right now. What was the point of the $50 million? To uh, show to him that he had memorized he one of the them, accounts. Yeah. But... I like to believe that he just memorized the one. Well, that's what he says, though. But he goes, I know what you're thinking. Could I possibly have memorized all his accounts? Would I really put my life's, my friend's lives in jeopardy by doing this? Mm -hmm. And he's like, there's only one yeah. way you can find out, motherfucker. Yep. I know that this is how we were going to end up. And he goes, I knew this was going to happen. From the beginning. And I'm counting on it. And I'm also counting on the fact that you're nothing without this fucking money. Mm -hmm. You're nothing. And you're nothing without and me, And you won't baby. kill me, motherfucker. You won't kill me because you need this money. And Solomon Lang's like, fuck. And I've this whole later. time... 
Benji has a timer on his right. chest that's counting down. Yeah, kind of. like, it's got like, like 30 seconds left. I think it counts down like, ni- like a 19th oh, point of a second yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. And then Lang hits the abort code and is like, fine, give me all the codes. Kill the girl, kill Benji, get me, get bring Ethan Hunt back alive. And uh, they take Where's the bomb. I think the they take disc? the bomb off of him at some point. Benji takes off. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, kill the girl. Yeah. Uh, bring me Hunt back alive. What does Ethan do? Realizing he cannot be killed, becomes a living shield for Ilsa. So Shit goes down, and he just cool. stabs right in front of her, and she does the thing where like the gun's underneath her, and he starts aiming for her, but they can't shoot him. Awesome scene. So Just good. great scene. Uh, they split off. They start running. Uh, Tom Cruise has a great fight scene with some guy where he like pushes him through a fucking wall again. And then pushes him through another wall as Ilsa runs in. Uh, she, of course, faces off against the Bone Collector. Uh, they got a great fight scene here where uh, they're fighting knife to knife, just stabbing yeah, the let's shit, see stabbing what you're and slashing shit out of each other. Yeah. Man. <clears throat> and then she goes, I'm done with this shit. Climbs up on him like he's the mountain and just stabs him in the top of the head and then rides his dying body down and just walks away. Baller ass move. Fucking cool. Uh, meanwhile, Ethan's been fucked up. He's been shot, stabbed, bludgeoned, all this shit from the first one ever. Uh, it doesn't matter. They, the two of them together have just di- decimated everyone at this point. They're shooting everyone. It doesn't matter. They split up. Ethan's by himself. And who's left? Lang. Pulls yeah. up in a car. Starts shooting at Ethan. Uh, Ethan limps away. Kind of maybe playing it up a little bit like he's a little fucked up. Uh, goes into this like uh, little mall area, whatever the hell this is. This is a band building. Like a parking garage. Parking garage, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, and then sees a hole and jumps down it, right? And then Lang's like, I got him. I <clears> fucking <throat> got him. Looks down. Dead to Ethan's, fucking rights. Ethan's just... In pain on the ground, just trying to just try to crawl away at this point. And Lane's like, "I got this motherfucker." Meanwhile, by the way, I forgot that we set up the fact that he's like, "Before this is all over, I'm gonna put your ass in a fucking box, like you put me in a box back in London." And he's like, "We'll we'll see about that." Uh, we'll jumps see about down, that and he's like, "Is it, man? You. I fucking got you." Uh, where's the disc? Anything for nothing. Oh, wait, I, I, I like these lines here. I wrote these downs. Uh, I the disc. Let's see. I am the desk. Uh, you see. are the desk, Ethan. The face of uh, he's like face to face, just as you wished, Ethan. But guess what, motherfucker? <sighs> we got outplayed because a fucking just the door just slams. There's this door, this top, bottom, everything. Lights go on. The song You're music in a box, starts playing, and I'm just like, holy shit, they <laughs> yeah. fucking did it. Dun, dun, I love dun, it. Dun, 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 and then dun, Ethan dun, looks dun. at him for a second and goes, and he starts shooting. He has the cool thing where he shoots the glass to shoot everyone, and the team's all around him, and he goes, hurts, doesn't it? I know. And then he goes, everyone, this is Solomon Lang. Solomon, meet the IMF team. Yeah. Oh, my God. So <laughs> good. And he just is like, motherfucker. And then they just pour a, probably a lethal dose of gas into this yeah. chamber. Oh, he poisons real good. All of the oxygen gone. Goes up and we have the same mirror image where he's slamming against the glass that Ethan was slamming against mm. in the vinyl offer back at the beginning of the just movie. Just shooting in the just fucking shooting, same place. Shoot, just pissed off. Uh, and then passes well, you, out and goes down. And then what does Ethan do? Just push pushes this over, thing dude. over. And Probably, it just pops. Yeah. They yeah. roll it into the back of a police van. Boom, we're done. Package uh, to deliver. Package to deliver. Uh, drive away with that thing. The real cops start showing up, and Ilsa uh, hugs Ethan, and she's like, you better hurry now. And Ethan goes, good luck. Um, and then she turns back around and goes, you know how to find you me. You know how to find me. Yeah, and drives oh. away. Oh, God. Yeah. Meanwhile, back in Washington, Hunley is back in front of uh, the Senate committee hearing, uh, and he's like, they're like, you're trying to tell me that you shuttered the IMF as a ruse to get in with the syndicate. He's like, listen, we didn't know if it had penetrated all of the ranks of the government. We didn't know how high high, it went. Sorry, apologies, we had to do this. And he's like, that's a pretty hard pill to swallow, and I really don't really appreciate uh, your tactics here, kind of using us as pawns. And then he goes, "Uh, Brant, what do you have to say about this? And Brant goes, I can neither confirm nor deny any details of any operation. (laughs) What a great payoff. (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then they walk out and uh and he look he turns over to Alec Baldwin and he says, Welcome to the IMF, Mr. Secretary. Hey, Alec Baldwin is our hey, new secretary. Yeah. All right. And the credits Cut to fucking <laughs> roll. Uh, and we get a cool uh, another cool little montage with the line going down. Yeah. Really fun. Uh but we finally I think we actually this is the first time we see the credit Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. I don't think they played it in the beginning. I don't know if we got that at the first. I mean we did actually yeah, we, we, did. Did. we did we got it in the thing. Yeah. We get another cool little credit tag where it's like Rogue Nation. Just so you didn't know. This is a fucking dope movie. Uh, and that's it. He's created a rogue and that's nation. It. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's time for a villain impossible. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> villain. <laughs> We're so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so what do we have so far, Kevin? Uh, list? So at the list stands right now. Owen slash Musgraves. Jim Phelps is our number two. Sean Ambrose is our number three. And Cobalt as our fourth. Mm. Mm. I got to mm. put Solomon Lang as number one. Yeah? I thought he was really good. What do you think? 
I mean, I'm not a part of Villain Impossible. I think you are. I'm pretty sure from it's the beginning, Kevin, I was like, Kevin, yeah. Kevin, it's if, your call. I thought it was just Kevin and Nick. I think he's number one, but I, I'm a, just a fan. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see an argument for number two underneath Owens because I and, and Davies because I liked mm -hmm. the the Philip Seymour Hoffman character, but yeah. I just feel like I, I, this is Ethan's like mental and physical match. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing. We didn't get much information on this villain. Just that like he's got a pretty good reason to hate all these secret organizations. He's smarter than than. Um, Tom Cruise. So I agree with you. He's going to number one. All right. Wow. There it is. I yeah. thought he'd be number two. And there you have it. You wanted to be <laughs> number one, didn't he? <laughs> Dick. But he's so, Philip Seymour Hoffman's so good, though. He yeah. was good. He's so An good. argument could be made, but I just feel like this guy was. I think Philip Seymour like Hoffman's a, like, I just like his demeanor more. Yeah. But uh, yeah. His, his name is uh, Lane, Lane, right? Not Lane. 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 Yeah. Lane. Lane. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Now it's time for haiku and review oh, bronze. Yeah. Seven syllables in. in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Everybody. Now stop. Stop. I, uh, <laughs> I also added Langley to that because I felt like he was... Hunley. Hun Is it Hunley? Hunley. 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 Not Langley. Like, Langley's where they're from. That's uh, where CIA right. headquarters is. Right. Hunley, I believe, mm. is the name of the character. Yeah. Wait, this is the guy, the British... Alec Baldwin. No, no, no. What oh, was the British... Atley. Atley, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. -E. That's what I meant to add. Uh, Sean Bowen from Game Attack writes in, thank the goddamn Lord for Rebecca Ferguson. God. She's my world, call damn. me. She's my world, God too. Damn. Um, and then, let's see. I agree, Bowen. The secretary. Oh, you're killing it with this one. Benji was always a great character, but now Benji is the bomb. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Really cool. cool. oh. oh, got it, got uh. it. Fucking idiot. I don't really get this one. Andrew Mendoza <clears throat> says, opera be lit, bang, bang. What's in the box? Smoke, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, look, sheeps, ba, ba. There was uh, sheeps at oh, some point. There? there was sheeps. When were there sheeps? There was a lot of sheeps in Morocco. No, there was. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, the nanobiologist says, I'm sad for Benji. He just wants to wear a mask. Give Benji a hug. <laughs> um, Great moment, Aiden. Tensa says movie was awesome. Rebecca Ferguson is smacky old mama hot. <laughs> Damn. I'll tell you that right now, son. <laughs> and James Davis says, I want this movie to share a universe with Fast and Furious. God, I want that too. All right, here we go. Uh, it's time to rank the Mission Impossible universe. Uh, current ranking stand, number one. Ghost Protocol. Number two, Mission Impossible 3. Number three, Mission Impossible. And number six, Mission Impossible 2. You don't need to hear Hands me say Hands down. It. I'm going to say this is one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. Yeah. It's so it's good. A great movie. It's just everything I, I want from a movie. And it just delivers. It's just so fucking fun. So high quality throughout. Like the, the, the acting's great. The score is great. The choreography is next level action. My God. I don't know. I don't know how you could be better than this. <laughs> just wait. I <laughs> just well, don't wait. overhype Fallout. I, no, I mean Fallout. Yeah, they just figured. I, it out. I, I don't know that it like I don't know. Could be. I don't this know. So I don't good. know if Fallout is better than this. Yeah. But also, these last three movies are again very. I hate to keep comparing this to Fast and Furious, but like. I think these the, these last three Mission Impossible movies are interchangeable for me, mm. where on any given day, I can like this movie more than the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, and it all just comes down to uh, the chemistry between, like, like Benji, in my opinion, is kind of like one of the saving graces for this franchise, where without oh, yeah. him, I don't know if yeah. I, they'd be as enjoyable. Um, but it all comes down to the different movies, uh, their gadgetry, and how they sort of... Um, construct a scene around it and so go ghost protocol can might be number one for me still really um mm. I'll, you know what i'm gonna keep ghost protocol number one <laughs> in your personal list but tomorrow maybe rogue nation I, but know, here's the, I, I think that rogue nation does a better job building the team having you care about them and then also <clears throat> like there's just something in ghost protocol when like they're in india like you're just like this doesn't need to be here and like this movie, I think, is a little bit longer than uh, Ghost Protocol, and it didn't feel that it way. It feels leaner. It feels so lean and well designed. And I think, and this one, like, the reason I like this is because Cobalt was just such a fucking generic character in four. This one I like. I, I wrote a line down here that I, that I meant to say, but we kind of skipped past it, where they're, they're sitting there, and they have this great line of dialogue where Elaine goes, human nature is my weapon of choice, right? Like, the moment I killed that young shop girl, and mm -hmm. I did that on purpose, the moment I killed her, 
I knew you would stop at nothing but to find me, and that's why you're at. Why that's why you're sitting here playing my game. So good. And it's re- I like the cat and mouse game. I like that Lane. At fr- when I first watched this, I was like, he's kind of generic. He's not. No, he's, he's actually not, yeah. a really cool. Uh, not as fleshed out as I would like it to in this in this movie. But I mean, there's not. There's only so much you could do with two hours right. and eleven minutes of pure the, adrenaline these, action. These movies aren't necessarily about the villain. It's not so much They're about, about the, the mission. But yeah. I do yeah. like that. We, this guy felt yeah. ominous. This guy yeah. felt uh, you know a step ahead. In control. Cobalt scary. Just, yeah. Cobalt yeah. just was like I, I don't know, like. He's yeah, just I totally legit. agree. You yeah, just I, don't know who the fuck yeah. that guy is. Solomon like, Lane is, is I think far and away a much better villain than any villain that was presented. He reminded me of L in Death Note. Yeah, and it's like that. Is such a compliment. It's like, cool. Yeah. This this movie was rad as fuck. And I, I didn't I like, like his hair though. Uh, well, he had a weird hair. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin, just go- Kevin just Googled him. He looks great with a beard. Yeah. He's got to keep it the beard forever. Oh, yeah. oh, that's um, a good like call. he looks weird yeah. without. He's got a the beard. weird look. Does he talk like that, or was that like a thing? No, that's just that's how he talks. Yeah, yeah. I, think he's, I think he's Swedish or something like that. It's Makes cool sense. though. So like, oh, um, man. no, I mean, I, and and I like I I, I liked. I like that dynamic, and I forgot how much I missed that dynamic because what it really does is it allows you to shed a little bit of light on. This is what I like. What they try to do with Mission Impossible is they still try to have some sort of character arc for Ethan, which is after five movies, you're like, how the fuck? What the fuck is he possibly going to wrestle with now? But but you do have this like, he's become is it destiny. ego? But like, but but there's a great moment where Brant's like, is this just ego? Are you just like? And mm-hmm. multiple people have said like. There's the theme of is are you just lucky? Is your luck gonna run out one day? But there's also the theme of like, dude, are you just are you making the situation worse because your own ego is getting in the way because you can't beat this guy? And then Ethan has to figure out, has to come to terms with that, and then go fuck. Maybe that's the case. But maybe by the way, maybe that is the key to beating this guy is that he's counting on me and my ego. He's counting on the fact that he knows that I have to be the hero and we could use that against him. It's really really cool. Beautiful. It's it's actually a pretty clever. Like piece of writing, and I think it comes together a lot nicer. Which, by mm-hmm. the way, is why you, when you pause it midway through, you want more of it, mm-hmm. as opposed to being like, "Oh shit, there's more of this movie left," mm-hmm. because there's no tie that goes un, like there's no loose end that goes undone. Well, I also think it's clear. Like, I feel like this is the first time in the franchise where I understood who, what everyone was doing at any point, and yeah. if I didn't, that was by design, and mm-hmm. I knew that it was, was going to be answered really, right. really yeah. soon. Like, yeah, like yeah, at first you're like, "What Rebecca Ferguson's yeah, character? What's what is she going on? Was she double?" And then you realize, "Oh, she's being played also," yeah. and it's and where Which, she's that is murky which then builds to like credit the uh villain where it's like oh this is the problem that's why he's a villain because also, she's totally getting fucked but that's how he recruits people too yeah right that's what i liked about mm-hmm. it is you like you could tell he's had that conversation before where he's like this is how i get all my people because the system has fucked you right why don't mm-hmm. you just come aboard come on come on board we're on the party train and that's really really cool like there's a there's a lot more layers to this movie than i thought originally when i first walked mm-hmm. out of the theater seeing it and i really appreciate it for that i think it makes i, I think it does what any good action movie does it needs to do which is it makes you care about the characters first and foremost what's going on with them so that when they're in those action sequences there's actually stakes absolutely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. You know what? I will stay. <laughs> I will stay. Rogue, run you over, huh? Rogue Nation the plot, <laughs> uh, plot, and everything I do in, and villain I do enjoy more in Rogue Nation. I will say that the the set pieces and um, just missions overall in Ghost Protocol I prefer more. It's a little more high profile. There's um, a little more highfalutinness to those. I love I love the glove scene on the Burj yeah. Khalifa. I again I, I love, love the water scene. I love the, and the hanging on the plane. I love the different. Um, we're faking out the bad guys to pretend we're on a different floor cool. and I mean, they think that. we're there. We think they're, you know, I love that whole sort of dynamic with the, you know, taking, the, taking uh, photos yeah, scanning, with the eyes yeah. and like that moment where you're like, oh, she, did she know? Like, I love all of that. So I, yeah, the, I like the missions more in Ghost Protocol, but I think Rogue Nation is an overall just better movie story wise and character wise. Time to vote. Who thinks it's better than Ghost Protocol? Raise your hand. I'm just going to keep it down. Just Everyone. Of it. Everyone. Andy. Raise their hand. Oh, except Andy. Andy does not raise his hand. Okay. I thought you switched. Tomorrow I'll raise my hand. Got it. Okay. Cool. Well, They're all good. Whatever. They're fucking good. Number one is now <laughs> this Rogue Nation. Number two, Ghost <laughs> Protocol. Number three, Mission Impossible 3. Number four, Mission Impossible. And number six, Mission Impossible 2. Next week, Mission Impossible Fallout. The end of the Mission, Mission Impossible franchise thus far. Uh, we got seven and eight coming, but not for a while. Yeah, it's 2021 and 2022. Oh, really? It's not 2020 and 21? Mm-mm. Damn it. Yeah, I'm excited to Henry Cavill joining the cast. In, in the next one. movie. Oh, Great. Yeah. This guy excited does for that. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah, that one fucking really scene. Cool. Right? I can't Square wait. It up. It's going to be real hard for me to not watch this movie. Like now. Do you have it in 4K? Okay. Yeah. Of course I do. Yeah. Oh, great, great, great. great. Yeah. I'm really, great, great. I'm really oh. I might actually watch it. Because the IMAX oh, scenes are actually yeah. in full. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's go, dude. Yeah, Let's yeah, fucking yeah. go. Until next time. This video will self-destruct in five seconds. Oh, no.